Starting to get the hang of this. <laughs> Starting to get the hang of this. Okay. Um, somebody do me a favor real quick and just pull up and see if it is in fact showing live feed. Because yeah, it's, in the, it's in the group. Yeah. I see it. Okay, because it is telling me we're having trouble playing this video. And I'm like, don't do that. I see it. Okay, that's all that matters. Long <gasps> I disappeared. Okay, remember, I can't move. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> try to get my background right. So tonight I wanted to have a new background. And so I was like, you know what? Let me just take a picture of what I want my background to be until I get everything set up with my computer and desktop and all that kind of good stuff. And once I have that set up, then voila, this will be more accurate to my background. So for the time being, this is what it's actually going to be tonight. So uh, we are Grown A Geeks. We thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, tonight we have David, Tony, and myself. Um, as always, if you're seeing this video, you're probably aware of our group. You can find us on Facebook at Grown A Geeks. Uh, and there will be links to this video available at a later time. Um, you will be able to find that on YouTube. There's a YouTube page, Grown A Geeks, on YouTube. So if you don't catch this live, you can always watch the playback. I'll try to get it loaded up a little faster than last week's, which just got loaded today. My apologies for that. Thought it was up and was looking at the page and saw that it wasn't. So I was like, well, let's get that on there. Um, we thank you. Thank those people who are joining us. Um, somebody give me an idea if there's live folks because my it is not giving me any information at the moment. Um, it is just like, if you say it's there, I trust it's there because I can't see it. Um, yeah, I'm looking right at it. All right, so you guys got to stay up on comments. And I had my phone... I don't know where it is, but I will find it at some point. Um, so tonight we are going to, there's a couple of things we're going to discuss. I think we were having a nice little pre-call discussion. We were talking about um, the Joker lifting Thor's hammer, specifically Arthur Fleck. I do want to specify that Arthur Fleck lifting um, Mjolnir. Um, and whether or not that would be possible, if that's something he could do. Um, we had a viewer request for us to discuss uh, vampires, lichens. Um, I'm all over that topic. And we were going to touch on um, the exclusive Spider-Man content coming for the Marvel Avengers game on PS4. Spider-Man has been announced as an exclusive character for PS4 owners. So if you get a PS4 or PS5, you will get to play as Spider-Man. And, of course, that raises a lot of questions in and of itself. Yes, it does. So <laughs> do we want to jump into that one first? It's up, yeah, I think David has something. He's got some feelings on it. So, yeah. Let's... I'm pretty sure this hits him Man. in his feelings. Right, now, you know what? I found this out the other day when we were talking. So, uh, David, I'm going to give you the floor. <clears throat> And right, everybody's so looking at you. So, <laughs> all right, boom, check it. So, <laughs> so if you weren't already aware, um, Sony tweeted out, and, and they specifically tweeted it out. Uh, and I'm gonna pull it up real quick, so I just have it on hand, so I'm not misread, like misquoting it. One sec. Uh, Let's see if I can pull up my Twitter. Ready. Okay, 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 you calm down. <laughs> um, Sony. Where in the world? I, I had the tweet earlier. That's crazy. Um, okay, here it is. Here, here, we, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, no, not, that's, that's not it. Ah, only the most professional streams here. Only the best, only the best. Uh, only let's the see. best. Where is that? Where is that? Where is I've that? got it pulled up. Okay. Is it the one that says your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man? That's the one, yeah. That yeah. is the it's one. All right, I just pulled it up. Yes, that... Your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man comes to Marvel Avengers exclusively on PlayStation. Crystal Dynamic offers early details on its own unique take on the post-launch hero. Ha huh. boy oh boy where do i begin ah <laughs> uh, well first of all this no matter how you feel 
about Xbox or PlayStation or anything, if you get anything other than the PlayStation version, you are objectively getting a worse product. Let's just call it what it is. Your game is literally inferior to the PlayStation version because it's missing it's missing content. It's it there's literally a character that you cannot play as on uh on the Xbox and PC versions, which also raises the question like why not even the PC version? Like I could understand if it was just an Xbox well, I'm stretching. I'm that's that's a stretch. I I can kinda understand it, but it still doesn't make sense that Spider-Man be exclusive to the PlayStation um, the PlayStation version. And at first it was funny, but then I read like all the comments and saw all the videos and everybody brings up a good point. Um and I had I had one pulled up here. Um Okay, so Sony doesn't care about the gamers or the gaming experience. Sony is about business and locking in features to sub consoles and services. Do I blame them? No, but it's not gamer friendly. And I think that kind of hits it on the head right there. Um, you would think there's... with a company calling themselves Sony Entertainment that they would be more interested in entertaining and being fan based and bringing the content that they have either A, to all platforms, or at least in the context of if they are wanting to have... Now, well, first to clarify, it has not been stated or clarified that Spider-Man won't eventually be available on those other platforms. No, it's 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 not a time exclusive. It is just going to be on PlayStation. See, now, if that is the case, then that means either Microsoft needs to have the option to have their own exclusive character or, and I mean that in, in part of the argument of course, is that since Spider-Man has exclusive or Sony has exclusive rights to Spider-Man with the last game that came out, as well as the whole Sony pictures deal and Marvel and all that kind of good stuff. It, it seems as, as you just mentioned, as that tweet states from a business perspective, it makes sense why they have that. But from a gamer perspective, we're missing out on something. And actually, I don't think that Sony Entertainment has the rights, like exclusively, to make Spider-Man video games. I think it was just the one game. Well, they have they the rights. They have the rights game. to the movies, yes. But I don't think they have the right. I don't think they exclusively own the rights to the 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 video game franchises. Well, the Sony video game. Since they were the last ones that had the rights for that exclusive game, that kind of ties into them bringing right. a version of that character because I don't think it's going to be the same character. It's not going to be. Yeah, it's not going to be the same version. This is a completely different, like universe. So that goes back into we the go we're not in six one six right. We, we're not in six one six anymore, and uh, <laughs> we get into a different universe with a different version of their exclusive Spider Man, which by itself is kind of like wait what. But uh, you don't you don't have to dive that deep down the rabbit hole for that one. Um, uh, what I'm I'm reading here it says Sony owns all the rights to Spider Man games. Is that, everything. Is that so? Okay. Yeah, see, and I, yeah. I thought that was one of the things that I had read. Now, the first thing that comes to mind is I remember back on um, let's let's travel back in time a little bit. I think it was GameCube, PS2, Xbox, Soul right. Calibur. Soul Calibur 2, yes. Offered exclusive characters per console. Right. And that was, because that was a multi-platform title, it made sense. And having exclusive characters for your version or the, the console that you preferred to make your purchase on, everybody still got some exclusive content. I recall there was um, Link, Yoda, and Darth Vader. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, no, you're you're mixing two of you're mixing two different uh, games up. It was Link, Heiachi, and Spawn in Soul Calibur Two, and it was, um, That's what it was Darth Vader and Yoda in Soul Calibur Four. Okay, there again, having those exclusive characters at that time for those games was 
it was kind of balanced because everybody had an exclusive character. And so having some content that other people didn't have, it at least was balanced and nobody really felt like they were being shortchanged because everybody got something extra. Now, they've been doing this a lot lately, and the first game that comes to mind is Destiny. And with the PS4 early access content that was available, if you got the game on PS4, you got content and stuff that came out first. You got some stuff that was only available on PS4. And a game like Destiny was not the kind of game that I wanted to have to grind through four or five times on each console just so I could have all their exclusive content. If you're not going to have right. something that's universal across both or until there's crossplay available, it's it's not going to work. And even crossplay brings up a whole other can of worms that you have to deal with because now I got to get my Xbox console patched in order to be compatible with your exclusive character that I can't play. Right. And that's just going to frustrate me and cause further division in the console wars. And it, it's... It comes back to the question of why wouldn't they even allow that on PC? Now, PS4 and PS5 are supposed to have some crossplay available for their their content. And so as long as you're going Sony, then you're good to go and Spider-Man's great. I wonder how much impact that character is going to have on the uh, game. Uh, a lot. Well, uh, well, post -launch, it's, it's a post-launch character, so it's not going to have that big uh, like a big impact on like the story mode itself maybe like the the, the multiplayer side quest thing that they're going to do um so it's not going to be that like divisive like story-wise um because it's going to be the same thing with hawkeye which is going to be post-launch as well um and and hawkeye is going to be available for all platforms. Well, Hawkeye being added in, I mean, Hawkeye's an Avenger, so if, yeah. given the title of the game, you know, Marvel Avengers, the only reason they get to bring Spider-Man in is because of the Sony exclusive, and that is Sony's way of... It's a slap in the face to anyone who's not a Sony gamer. Right. And oh, by the way, I did I did just look it up for myself, and yeah, it, Sony does own all the rights to Spider Man, like games, movies, all that. Um, it's part of a agreement between D Disney and Sony. That's okay. So that's why. So I was wrong. So I'll admit that. It's it's just one of those things where it's like, it comes back to say when you have these console wars and people are making their decision, they're making their, their purchase options. Um, I think anyone can agree that whenever you get ready to buy a game that's cross platform or if it, it's, a, if it's available on multiple platforms, you have a decision to make. Um, who are you going to be playing the game with? If it's an online game, are you going to play online with your Xbox people? You're going to play online with your PlayStation people. Um, and as time goes on, you start to realize like, okay, a majority of my friends that I play online with are all playing on PS4. Ergo, whenever I buy a game that I plan to play multiplayer online, I am leaning more towards getting that on PS4. Now, single player stories or games that I don't really care to get online with, I'm good to buy that on my Xbox all day, every day. Outside of that, me personally, I was very much, I mean, like you could even see it right there. That's my Xbox catalog. That's my PS4 catalog. And, you know, it was like a majority of what I have on PS4 were online multiplayer games, games that I would play with other people as a majority of the people that I played online with were all leaning towards going PS4. Xbox, on the other hand, that was my console of choice. And there's this whole conversation I've had about controllers and I just don't care for the, <laughs> I just don't care for the PS4 controller personally. Um, as I've played more on my PS4, I've gotten accustomed to it. I, you know, you make the adjustment as a gamer, you figure it out and you <clears> deal with it. But the natural position of the left analog stick to me needs to be higher. And that's where it is on Xbox. And that's where I've preferred it to be. And that's why I prefer my Xbox controller. Um, all of the arguments as far as like rechargeable batteries and the charge cable and stuff like that. I mean, if you're 
within distance of your console, you can plug a cable up and play it just like that. Um, the PS4 has the built-in rechargeable battery, so if it dies, it dies. You can't put in new batteries real quick. It has to plug up and charge. So if you don't have that cable, there is no other option. So, I mean, everybody can make an argument, pro, con. That's not the discussion we're having here. <laughs> Just in terms of the, the additional content, this is the kind of game, while I enjoyed Spider-Man, the Spider-Man title on PS4, I don't know that I would make an entire gaming decision based on one character in the game that I can only play on one system. Now, if I'm looking to make an argument for getting my money's worth, it does sound like there's going to be more game on PS4. Yeah. Ergo, if I want to feel like my $60 was well spent, maybe I'm going to spend that 60 on the PS4 version or the PS5 version just so I get an extra three, four, five hours of gameplay. See, there, there in it lies the issue that people are having with it. So, all right. So, say you're going to get the PlayStation version and I'm going to get the Xbox version. We're, play, we're both paying $60 for it. I'm not getting the same product that you're getting. Nope. It's like it's like if we both walked out, if we both walked out the Foot Locker right now, and bought a pair of Jordans, and you got two Jordans, you got two pair, you got two shoes. I got one. That's crazy. I'm gonna I, feel cheated. I would think. I would think in the context, it would probably be something more akin to we both bought a pair of Jordans, but I got three pairs of extra laces. And you just got the one standard color laces that come with it. Me having that right, extra that's all, content. That's, yeah, that's also a good way. Yeah, that's a good me way. having that extra content is like, well, why does he get laces and I don't? Oh, right. because th there's there's no justification for it in that regard. Now, I have no problem if, and let's see, it, it's kind of a weird thing. Is the Spider-Man character going to be DLC? Yes. Do the Sony characters? I mean, do the Sony? Does PS4 and PS5 players do they have to purchase that character? No, every, everything everything that's post launch for Avengers is going to be free for everybody. Then I got an issue with it. If they were, if if it was exclusive content that they could download because it's PS4, PS5, and they purchased it, then hey, because that that makes the same argument as far as we're both paying fifty nine ninety nine and you had to pay an extra ten dollars to get Spider Man. So right. now technically you're paying sixty nine ninety nine. You paid more. You should get more. That's fair. I have no issue with that. But if they're just gonna like give that character and it's free and it's just something that PS4 has because, eh, that's kind of crappy. At least make the character available to the Xbox people. Even if you do it, I mean, like it. It literally needs to be something like give the six month exclusive rights or whatever the case may be. Let Sony have it for so long, but at some point it needs to come over to Xbox so that the people who buy it on Xbox are people because it, it not everybody's going to have the option to buy both consoles. And there are some people who are only going to have one choice. And if I start seeing a trend where like Sony is doing all of this and Xbox isn't, I could be looked at two ways. Either I'm going to look at it and be like, Xbox, you need to step up and come up, come with some content. Or that's just going to turn me off more towards Sony to be like, why are they always pooping on me owning an Xbox? Now, who's the developer? Who's the developer for the Avengers game? Um, Square Enix, I think. Now, Square Enix has a long history of love with Sony. And... I don't know. They was like, on, they Ross and Rachel to me. They on again, off again, on again, off again. But more times than not, people just automatically put those two together. <clears throat> yeah, it is Square Enix. Yeah. And see, and Square Enix only has... This would be one of those moments where it's like, I would need to have a large... This is where okay, I need... Well, okay, so... Okay, Square Enix is publishing it. Uh, Crystal Dynamics is developing it. Okay, okay. Crystal Dynamics. I'm trying to think. What was their last title? They did. Um... Uh, the last thing that Crystal Dynamics did was. Let me check it out real quick. Because um... they're one of those names that you hear it and you like kind of know 
Oh, uh, the the Tomb Raider, the new Tomb Raider games, the reboot, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. That's it. Yeah, that's it. And those are really good games. Yeah. Those were those were really well done games. Those were some very brutal games, by the way. <laughs> like they was beating up poor Laura in that game, boy. And um I remember watching a um what was it um late night with Conan and he was doing like Coco plays this and he picked up the Tomb Raider game and he just could not get through the um well essentially the waterfall portion of the game where you're like oh. going through the stream and it was just like oof. Just to watch that over and over. I mean, even he was like, Let, "Let's cut to another part. This is this is pretty bad. I feel bad." <laughs> but I don't know. I, I I think everything I've seen about the game so far, it does look like it's going to be a very good game. It does look like it's going to be enjoyable and fun to play. Um, it looks way better than it did when they first showed it off. This is true. Yeesh. This is true. And I was thinking like, the um, what was the Marvel Ultimate Alliance was right. a very simple game. It wasn't extremely complex. It had some great story elements, and the first one and the second one. And of course, uh, was it the second one that kind of led into Civil War? Yeah, I think yes. I think uh, Marvel yes. Ultimate Alliance two kind of touched on some Civil I'm, War points. Kind of sort of, yeah. And they use some um, elements of Marvel Civil War for in game, which I thought was was really really cool, and and helped to add some filler elements. Um, it's telling me Will is in here. There we go. Okay. Well, we got. Oh, and of course. See, why does he do that? He brings in his Spider Man icon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, see, that's how you start stuff. Um, Will, you're here, but I don't have your audio yet. You sure? Okay, there oh, you there's go. There's audio. I just, I was just making sure I got you now. All right. Um, and look, there's my little Iron Man right there for you, buddy. You right there. You see him right there in the corner. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I'm 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 looking forward to the game. I think it's going to be very enjoyable. A lot of the gameplay footage we've seen, the actual play footage. I mean, all the video clips look fantastic, but that's pretty standard for you know most cutscenes and games and things like that nowadays. Anyway, um, I will be very happy if they have a a nice blend of if the game goes into cutscene back into game if it has that seamless transition where you you just pick up and play that'll be a plus um yeah. as opposed to those <laughs> here, here he go really here he go what's up <laughs> see like okay it's good no i mean i i hey it is what it is but um, he's he's a fan. I mean, he like you own both consoles, so this would be. Let's get your opinion on that, because much like David, if I'm not mistaken, that's you, that's me, Will, that's you as well. So like, PS4 versus Xbox, what are your feelings on this? Like, were they wrong for that, or is that like a good move on Sony's part? Well, it, it's it's a little bit of both, actually. It's like it's really good on Sony's part because they're gonna sell hell of copies of Marvel Avengers on PS4. It's going a lot, but then you have the consumer. Like me, for example, I I was planning to get it on Xbox because like the majority of people that I was gonna play it with play it on Xbox. Spider Man's in the game. What am I? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do now? Like, am I just going to buy the PS4 version and just abandon them and not play with them ever? Or am I going to have to buy two different copies of it? Three different, actually, because I might get it on PC, too. I don't know. See, it's... So, it's... Like, so I got to make a decision before the game comes out. Yeah. I don't know. So, Personally, I'm I'm feeling like... It does no good to try to rebel against Sony for this. Um, 
Right, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Sony's doing what Sony does in their business, and they got to look bit, out for right. One. It's a business, and they there they to gotta make money. They got to look out for one number one. So I'm not mad at them for doing it. I I'm very upset with the situation. Yeah, I just think it would be a good a good gesture from Sony, the company. This is the same company that, and and let me tread lightly here. This was the same company that delayed their announcements because there were other things that took precedence. So it's not like we're talking about a company that doesn't care about people in general or that they don't, you know, know how to market certain things because that was as much a marketing thing as anything, but it was in their favor and I don't hate them for it. So kudos to them for that. But then when it comes time to actually like make some money, they, you know, business as usual. They got to make the money. But see, I don't think they was going to lose any money by making Spider-Man available to everyone. They they wasn't. That's the thing. Like, they would well, probably... See, so, if they had larger stake in the development of the game, that would be one thing. So here's the thing. Like, yeah, they wouldn't lose money, but so they, they gain everything and lose nothing. Like it's it's a no brainer it's a no brainer decision. Oh yeah, I'm sure when that when that like, conversation was I, had, do the... I get a million dollars by letting everybody play as Spider Man, or do I get five million dollars by keeping Spider Man to myself? And one thing about it, do you think this game will be a console seller? No. So in that regard, if it was if it was going if this was the type of Character exclusive content. If this was something that well, was going to motivate people to well, I purchase would, consoles, I would, I would say yes. If we weren't on the verge of a new console, like this is not going to push any PS4 consoles. I don't think. I I would be hard pressed to believe that it's going to push a lot of PS5 consoles. I don't think it's going to be that kind of game. So when people get down and they get ready to make their decision and they're like, okay, am I buying this PS5 or am I buying this Xbox? And they're looking at the two consoles and then they're like, oh, well, I'm going to get that Marvel Avengers game. Oh, I can get Spider-Man if I get the PS5 version? How many times do you think that conversation is going to result in the purchase of a PS5? Out of, out of 10 consoles sold, one, two? Maybe one. Maybe two if I'm being generous. I don't think it's going to be that much of a deciding factor. What'd you think, Will? Uh, all right. I'll run, run at the beginning. Um, am I happy that I, as a both console owner, but uh, primarily PS4, I'm very happy that uh, I do have access to Spider-Man. Uh, I was having an in-depth conversation with this that I'm sure you guys saw with uh, Christian Lukens about uh, this whole thing. And while I understand both sides with that, with making money and stuff like that and the exclusiveness, I do agree that uh, it should have been made available to everyone. It doesn't make any sense as to why you would keep, you know, Marvel's flagship character, you know, exclusive to something. Like, I can understand you've already got Marvel's Spider-Man and stuff game, so you've already got that IP. Like, that's, that's all good. Why not make this for everybody? It, it doesn't make any sense to it that because you're not pulling like what they did with Soul Calibur back in the day. It's not like it's an exclusive character. It's like that. This is a character that is well rounded throughout the, the Marvel universe. So, that. so it doesn't make sense. Plus, you got to remember, Sony's already got their hands in Xbox's pocket with the creation of Blu ray. And so, that all the Blu ray, you know, formats and stuff is all owned by Sony. So, that and that's in every Xbox. So, that. so it was like, how much more do you really want to push the uh, we 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 got this come over here type thing when you are don't have to like your your consoles are selling so we it was proven last you know or this current console cycle so like that PS4 outsold Xbox but that they didn't need any more help like it wasn't it was not necessary it was a necessary move I think it was kind of a bit of a of a dick move and stuff on their part so that but at the same time I understand business and so like that and by people flock to stuff being exclusive. So yeah. as soon as that exclusive goes up, it's going to start a whole bunch of press. It's going to start a whole bunch of, you know, talk back and forth and stuff like that. And 
if they want to do damage control, the best thing that I think they can do is like that is uh, it's already been announced exclusive. I'll say limit the exclusivity period. Uh, I'll say that word. Uh, I would say freaking you no know, more than a year. So at that freaking, I would you know preferably be like, yeah, I would have just if you had to do it exclusive, I would say you know okay make it freaking it's only it's exclusive to you know PS4. So that when the new Xbox and new PlayStation launch because the game carries over, then make Spider Man available for all. So at that if you want to push. And see, I think that people wouldn't be as upset about it if it was a timed exclusive. Like if they said like right. maybe like okay six months or a year. Uh, Spider Man is going to be exclusive on PS4, and then he'll be available to all platforms uh, uh, this time, 2021. Nope, I guarantee like 90% of people would not be as upset as they are now. It would work. Destiny did, and it worked just fine. Yeah, like Hawk Moon was exclusive for a minute and stuff like that, and then Xbox got it. Nobody really gave a damn. Everybody was still running with it. So, right. And I and I definitely think that there is a certain level of understanding that comes with the word exclusive, the exclusive t- exclusivity. Yeah, you're right. That is a difficult one. The exclusiveness of a character is, you know, well understood. Anybody who owns an Xbox one knows that they can't play the new Spider-Man game or the, I guess at this point, the, the current Spider-Man game, you can't play that because you own an Xbox. You have to have a PS4 to play that game. There are a number of exclusive titles on either console and in order to play that you have to have that console so people understand the concept of exclusive content but rarely do you get exclusive content on something that's cross-platform that doesn't eventually become available for everyone and that is i think where the biggest issue comes in in this case is that sony is saying it and the way they've announced it is they're announcing it in a way that i mean it's basically been clarified y'all ain't getting it just us just us, just us. And it would be different if this was a Sony produced title. If it was a first, you know, like if it was an exclusive game overall, if it was just a PS4, PS5 title, that would be one thing. But given that the game came out and it's like, it is designed as a multi-platform game, the fact that Sony gets this exclusive content that no one else gets is... It's unfair to say the least. And I want to kind of see what the contract is looking like. As, think about it. So, Sony has the contract for Spider Man uh, for film and television and stuff like that. Oh, no, we, um, we, we checked on that. They have all rights. Sony has all rights to Spider Man currently. Okay, yeah, that's what I wanted to make sure so that they have all rights with that. Then again, I'm pretty sure it was a, you know, a number cruncher back there. It's like, hey, we can push this out and make more money off of it as opposed to someone like us who's more you know unified gamers and stuff like that it's like we just want to play so so we have we have a viewer in here tonight with this uh charles cochran he points out the game cyberpunk and he thinks cyberpunk is going to be the game that's going to sell consoles I'm, I'm guessing that's what he's referring to and i think that would be a good title to have some console exclusive content um and you got keanu reeves coming out there with, with cyberpunk so hey right Right. They could pull a lot right now. Right. See, and and the fact, I think that they could go, they could do something with that and have it reminiscent of, you know, the old Soul Calibur series where Xbox characters are going to get this, um, Sony characters are going to get this. And, you know, if you give something to either, or maybe even do something for PC characters, PC characters are going to get this. I mean, there's a couple of different ways that it could be done. And, you know, I don't know if the bean counters have anything to do with it or if it becomes a question of developing, you know, because when they develop these games, they're um, and this was this was actually a question that came up when we were looking at the uh, Halo footage for the new the new Halo title. When these games are designed and they're developed, they're developing the game based on the product is going to be played on. So. Is the PS4 version going to be ported to PS5 versus did they develop this game for the new Xbox? If that's the case, then you're looking at a situation where your PS, your new Xbox version is going to play a lot differently and probably have you know better graphics, better um, visuals, better gameplay, better controls, things of that nature. 
where your PS4 version being an import to PS5, because they are making it compatible for both, could suffer as a result. And once you have to include this extra content of this character, how does that impact the way the game is designed in terms of development? Because if you made a game using the hardware capabilities of the PS5 and then tried to run that on a PS4, probably going to run very crappy. But if you do that in the reverse and you develop the game on the PS4 and you port it up to the PS5, PS5, you know, do you take your Porsche to the end of the driveway to get your mail? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's capable of doing it, but that's overkill. So if you're not right. taking full advantage of the hardware because you had to make it compatible with both, that's that's something that you could find makes a difference. And maybe, just maybe, that's why they're including the Spider-Man content to kind of make up for where they know they're going to be lacking in that regard. But this new Marvel title, that this is coming out on Xbox One as well, right? Yes. So then that means they're developing four different versions of the game and everybody's version is going to be compatible with the necessary hardware. So that argument's gone. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe maybe they're just going to like do the PS4 version and map it up for the PS5 and they know that that's going to be a difference. So it, it could be that. But I don't know. As a gamer, I wish they had handled it differently from a business model. Get that dough. Can't really be mad about that. I say, yeah, you gotta gotta recognize game. There it is. That, that about sums it up. So, um, any any final thoughts on the Spider Man title? Xbox. Do what? Squirrel Girl for Xbox. Let's go. Let's make it happen. See, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Squirrel Girl for that. Xbox. Let's do it. You know what? We need we need to make that a hashtag and get that trending. I'm hashtag with that. Like, you know, Marvel could have done. Uh, I think I made the suggestion. Somebody said uh, somebody else. Would, I made a suggestion. You know, I think you know Xbox was like, well, won't they just uh, do damage control and like put Wolverine exclusive to Xbox? Then it's kind of fighting fire with fire, so to speak. You know, Wolverine's a pretty popular character. I mean, it's not going to be has the same impact as Spider Man or that, but I mean, it's still a pretty good. Job. Well, I don't know if if see then that then you just you're almost like doing a race war at that point. Yeah, and then I'd, I'd swap them stuff like that because they they already announced it as exclusive, so that so they're not taking that back. The only thing they can do is change it to a timed exclusive that would make it any better, so that so I was like, all right, well in the meantime. Here's Wolverine, and then in six months, y'all gonna swap each one, get the other one, and then there, yeah. all, all, all's well in the world. Everything is fixed like that. That's damage control. But again, it just depends on how they're gonna how they're gonna pull it. So, I mean, I'm Crystal curious, Dynamics gonna get paid yeah. regardless. Yeah, Sony gonna get they cut, and yeah. Xbox will hopefully learn from this and, <laughs> and learn how to get back in the game. As far as the word exclusive. And maybe if their exclusive titles were better. So um, we're not going we're not going to open that can of work. We will. We will sit and have a conversation one day and just we will we will have the console war on on camera and we will let people. We won't even put up a poll and let people choose sides because I don't think that's necessary. I, love Xbox. But... I really do. There's so many things I love about Xbox. Like that. I just I just want it to be more. Either let's let's bring all this together and just call it a day and stuff like that. Or see, I'm know. still waiting on the play box. I want the play box 365. I'm tired of it. Made by Nintendo. No, I want the Nintendo play box. Oh my god. <laughs> As soon as we get the Nintendo box. Play Box and the console wars are over, imagine the kind of games we would get then. I'm still waiting on the Gamecast. Yeah, that was. There's so much that could. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Back in my day, Dreamcast used to come you, you know, Dreamcast was one of the, like, Fantasy Star Online was the first game that I remembered actually like truly, truly playing online consistently. There was a, um, 
what was the game on PS2? I want to say it was a fantasy star, not a fantasy star, but a uh, Final Fantasy game on PS2 that had an adapter available for it that you could actually play online. Uh, probably eleven. I'm trying that's to the only. That's yeah, the only okay. other. That's the only other uh, Final Fantasy that's online like that. That was, but see, that was like going back to PS2, and right. then I remember um, SOCOM was a PS2 oh, game you so could play cool. online. I want another SOCOM. I'm, I'm, look, Call of Duty can sit down with it. Give me another SOCOM. Yeah, that, I would. I would play another SOCOM if they came <clears> out with one. I would look forward to that. But I think as far as like the online multiplayer game, there were a few titles, but I think the one that like really changed the way people play games online was Halo. And that was an Xbox title. And I mean, you could do local LAN parties, you could do online LAN parties. And it was after, after Halo came out and started making people get online and play that was when you started seeing all these other games really try to focus in on having a better online multiplayer aspect to their games. Um, the Call of Duty games really started getting into their online multiplayer, but I think a lot of credit goes to Halo for making that doable, making that, mm, shall we say, a focus of the game right. and an equal focus of the game, because not only did you have the uh just the standard pvp and deathmatch and things like that but you had capture the flag and the team battle the team right and the way we played these online games were ooh neo geo yes charles i remember now what was okay so charles since you're in chat just type this up and we'll we'll come back to it but what was the online multiplayer game from neo geo um they have one samurai showdown was one I believe it was World Heroes and there might be another one. If you can recall, let me know those and uh we'll 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 touch on that. But so it's out there. Final Fantasy Eleven supposed to be getting some more content this month after so many years. Final Fantasy Eleven? Wow. Wait, hold on, there's no way. <laughs> so I was reading freaking please correct me if I'm wrong. I know Final Fantasy fourteen is having an update. Oh yeah, fourteen has an update coming as well. I think on the eleventh or something like that. Yeah, on the eleventh. What? Hold on, I gotta see this real quick. What? What? Final Fantasy eleven still getting updated? I thought it was done. (laughs) Like, I mean, well, first of all, like, what do you even need? Okay, let me let me figure this thought out. Is that game Um, available on PC? What? Final Fantasy Eleven. Yes, technically. So, and I'm just thinking in terms of the servers that are hosting this game and making this available for people to play. Like, are we literally talking about people still playing Final Fantasy Eleven through their PS2s? Uh, no, I think everybody is playing Eleven right now. Is playing it on their on PC. Okay, well then, if that's the case, then them getting new content seems very feasible and highly likely um, I that well, odd, I didn't really to say the least because that's that. a long time ago that's that's a moment but not impossible especially given that that you know there are people that are still playing tons of different mmos and every now and again i see a link saying that oh such and such server is finally going down after so many years and that's always always kind of sad to see that you know people have been playing something for so long and now it's going out it's just like ah I hate it for you guys. It sucks. But, okay, um, so yeah, so Final Fantasy XI is still being played online by lots of people. Jesus Christ! Um, but you know what's really interesting? But I don't see any like update, like any major updates. Like the most recent update happened today, and that was like the like a summer festival thing, which is like a little event that's going on. I don't think that's not. I mean, yeah, they're still yeah, getting updates. Like, be, it's just like storyline content, so I'm not sure. What to well, wait. that doesn't make sense because the whole storyline in Final Fantasy XI is done. Like, it's that's over. That's just something that at I read. this that's point, it should just be a bunch of people there. running around at in game, just continuing to grind for the sake of it for the community. Right. I think that's what it is. It would almost I gotta see about that. Like, I would almost hope that's the case, but if not, then you know, great. Kudos. I'm glad you guys got I mean, some new content. Nah, yeah, I'm. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm happy. 
I'm happy for him. We we want we want oh, wait, oh, to have comfortable. comfortable. Okay, okay, so okay, so yeah, the the PlayStation Two and three sixty versions of the game ended on uh, March thirty first, twenty sixteen, but the PC platform is still available. Okay, cool. So that yeah. that would that would explain why they are still able to get updates because there are still people that are able to play, and that's one of those games, if I'm not mistaken, it's like free to join. And for a long time, there was the um, the membership you had to get the Sony mem- or the Final Fantasy membership you had to have in order yeah. to access it. Kind of something akin to a season pass, but it was exclusive access to that game. Yeah, subscription. subscription. Yeah, subscription. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. And um, I'm, you know, wow. Good job that they're still going. Kudos to them. Um, I learned something today. I, I thought that game died, but apparently not. <laughs> I promise you, I hadn't even thought about that game. I think I tried that like one time, played it a few few days, and was like, yeah, this ain't me. I couldn't, I just couldn't quite. It was one of those games where I felt like I was going to have to like kill the sand crabs for too long to be able to make it worth playing because everyone was so far ahead of me. It's like, nah. We're not doing that. But I was trying to see if he... Yeah, Final Fantasy XI will please unveil a special website for the Gracious Resurgence, a brand new storyline that commences on Thursday, August 6th. Final Fantasy XI, the Gracious Resurgence. I don't know what this is. What? Gracious Resurgence. I'm, I'm on... Yeah, I'm looking at uh, something... Uh, Support Square Enix, uh, playonline.com, Final Fantasy 11 US. Uh, yeah. Cool. Well, hey, for yeah, those of you who are out there want to play some Final Fantasy MMO, now's the time to jump in. They got some new content coming. So <laughs> you, you might oh, be able wow. to join in and get in where it's available. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. When you were saying that, I thought it was a fan thing. No, this is official. Wow. Oh. Wow. So you heard it here first, folks. If you didn't catch the email yourself, we're we're I guess we're hyping it up a little bit because David seems quite interested. Might make no, me I, go. I, I can't I can't do eleven and fourteen at the same time. There's no way. <laughs> that's, There's what no you were, way. that's what you were streaming earlier was fourteen, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so folks remember now you can um at some point and we still haven't done it, so shame on me. Uh, shame on you, Will, because you were supposed to remind me. But uh, <laughs> we have a lot of gamers in our group, and a lot of them stream on Twitch and Mixer. And well, is Mixer still around? Mixer is, I believe, Mixer's dead. Okay. No, they they uh, they're doing like Facebook gaming and stuff like that. And by the way, David said he got it when you told me I was running. David said he had it. So damn it, David. Damn it, David. <laughs> but hello. <laughs> So we want to go back and watch the screen. He said he got it. I was like, all right, cool. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're just going to put it out here now. (laughs) I'm going to ask everyone who watches this video, if you are a member of the group, that's first. So if you're not a member, join. But if you're a member of the group and you stream, I want you to send us your Twitch handle and a notification, you know, like just you are welcome to post in group whenever you are streaming put your link to your game in here when you are streaming um we need to have you know like because i don't i can't remember everybody's name and things like that but i know we have a number my man right here heroic hat you can watch him i was watching him earlier um he was streaming pretty soon switch. yeah pretty soon we're gonna see tony we're gonna be we're gonna be streaming his because he's gonna he's gonna hook it up and entertain us during the day, make sure you save those Go so I can have some my name. fresh mixes when I'm out at work and just I bored. Ain't saying that name right now, well, relax. <laughs> yeah, we just we gonna let him figure out what he's doing about that name. But you know he's gonna be <laughs> DJ Grease. We are just gonna leave it there. I can't <laughs> do it. I can't do it. But you know for two months, so so maybe don't we'll follow him out. right away. But be prepared. Now, actually, as soon oh. as he soon as he's up and running, I want you all to follow him. Make sure to check out Heroic Hats here. Actually, I, hey, quick shameless plug. Uh, I'm going to be streaming tomorrow because Sony's uh, State of Play is tomorrow, and I'm about to stream that and react to that. So pull up. There, there you, go. you go. Oh, I'll be there. Shameless I, plug. I, I, I got reminders set up for you. Yep. Four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And give us that name and time again. 
yeah, four o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I'm probably going to be going live 3:30. Uh, just do a little pre-stream, get all the levels right and everything, and then we'll uh, once it goes live at four, four, we'll just jump in like that. Cool. And what what was the what was the handle? A heroic hat. Heroic, heroic hat. hat. So look yes. for heroic hat on Twitch. In fact, you could probably just go through the. Um, I said you put a link in there uh, earlier, didn't you? Yeah, there is a link in our group because um, he was streaming earlier and I jumped in with him and we were chit chatting a little bit and I was watching. Having him the search and, bar to pop up. Yeah. Yes, sir. In fact, I think if you just like type in Twitch in the in the search, you could probably find everybody who streams. Um, but I would yeah, like to have an official it. thread. I'm gonna I'm gonna type something up and we would like to add your name and have a file and list it so that everybody can find all of the people who stream okay. and we'll support all of our members who stream. Um, I know Christian has streamed a number of times and I love watching his because when a new game comes out, he gets a lot of betas. So I get to watch a lot of betas with him mm -hmm. and that's really cool. So I appreciate that. Um, we can do that. We've got, <laughs> um, we've got uh, right. Brian Roseberry, his is Sneaks. I believe there's something there. He actually streams, he's like a ranked nationwide player for uh, StarCraft. I mean, oh. he's like, up there, sure. up there. So you know when you're watching the Zerg and the the Space Marines and stuff like that, and he's you know that's a um, real time strategy game. Uh, Malt Oppa, that is uh, Lewis Morgan. He's an avid group member, and of course he's always streaming something. You can catch him streaming some really good one offs, um, a lot of JRPGs and content that you know you may not know about. I'd like to have somebody who wants to jump in there and do some of our Let's Plays because we actually have our own Twitch account here, uh, Gag Gamers. There's nothing really to see, just some old stuff I was playing when I was first getting started just so that there was some content on there. But if anybody wants to jump in here and take over the Gag Gamers channel, you know, you got to be on your game. You got to get out there when stuff first comes out and whatnot, and we'll look into maybe some sponsorship and whatnot, and so maybe we can get our hands on some titles early and play them and put them out there and advertise it that that'd be fantastic um, i'm probably going to stream this this avengers beta think about it see that and that would be the kind of thing and so you know he's got his streaming links and i just want to make sure we get everybody who does stream all right we got a post in the group right now so if you have a stream throw ahead go ahead throw your link in there in the comments i started mine i started with mine so you know what it, what it is so we want to make sure we give all that love to all the all the gamers and everybody who streams will try to jump in. I try to jump in everybody's whenever I see it when I can, if it doesn't conflict with what I'm doing at the time. Um, also, just check out your boy Hero Cat. He does fighting games. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we had a uh, a special request from some of our viewers who um, have been pretty faithfully watching us as we've been doing our live streams and whatnot. And they requested that we discuss, um, you know, they gave us a topic because I'm you know, always throwing out there, what do you guys want to hear us talk about? And um, they were interested in hearing us talk and discuss vampires, lichens. So it's vampires and werewolves. Um, and which, I would say which, that probably falls like, all, right, all right, so what are we talking about? Like what in, in what context are we talking about them? I didn't have a specific context. I figured it would just be a maybe just kind of an open forum discussion as far as what we like, what we don't like. Maybe we could talk about which vampires were best, who would win in a fight. We can do some. I mean, it's, it's four geeks that are having a conversation about vampires and werewolves. We can figure out what we're going to say. We ain't got to have a real format. Right. Okay. We, like, we which, can, we can stumble vampire, through it. Which style of vampire are we talking? We talk about Ghostferatu vampire. We talk about Dracula. We talk about Fright Night vampires. Which, I mean, Murphy. Murphy. Well, Vampire Slayer had her own kind of vampire. Which kind are we talking about? Okay, so let's they, let's start know, here. Fright Night kind of threw everything in the loop. Okay, well, I got something for you. Let's start here. My son, his name is Marius Armand. That comes from... The Vampire Chronicles, written by Anne Rice, and that is my son's actual like name on his birth certificate, Marius Armand, as those were the two favorite characters of all the different vampires that I've seen, be it TV, movies, television shows, uh, books that I've read and things like that. I think the Anne Rice vampires were some of the best written vampires. They didn't necessarily translate as well to screen, 
but even Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, from Interview with the Vampire. Yeah, Anne Rice wasn't even happy about that movie, but like, I think for starters, vampires over werewolves, in my opinion. I think that- All day. I, th I think that the- uh, All day. I think the vampires, that's probably the way to go. Like if there came down and I was gonna be bit by one, I would much rather be bit by the vampire than the werewolf. Um, if I got to okay, live out- what's your, what's your favorite, give me y'all favorite type, what kind of vampire? Which one of your movie vampires is your favorite? Like I'm saying, because for me, if I if I had to pick the situation not to be in, if I had to pick that vampire I did not want to go against, it's Thirty Days of Night. Mm. Those were the zombie those, vampires. They yeah. didn't play. Those those were definitely the zombie vampires. I would probably go. They were killing everybody. If I had to go with the movie Vampire, I would probably go something like Celine from Underworld. I would want to be, I forget the, the, the one guy's name, but the, hy the hybrid lichen vampire. Yeah. William. William. Oh, of course you would remember that. <laughs> Thank you for that. But yeah, I would um, <laughs> I would probably lean towards that being, and then after that, second second runner up would be something like a uh, Daywalker. You know what I'm saying? Give me Blade. Let me let me be Blade. You're trying to be a hybrid. You're trying to be a hybrid. You're all day. I want all. The, I want all of the strengths and none of the weaknesses. Every time. Okay. Okay. Let's go with this then. Who's the, what's the most destructive vampire you've seen in a movie? Out of all of them together. Dracula from Castlevania. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Dracula from Castlevania was no joke. And yeah. I am... Hero fucks. I am like... Yeah. That's our one. Uh, <laughs> there it is. And like... I have to say that one, I'm almost wondering, like, you know what? It makes sense that the entire Belmont family died out if that's what they had to go up against. You know, like you can't even, you can't even be mad about that. And Alucard is kind of like, that's one of those situations. Spoiler alert, Castlevania been out long enough. But I am gonna say go watch it. So let me not let me not like a thirty year old game, you know. <laughs> right. I mean, but but you know the animated series. That one, I mean, you know the animated that was on Netflix. That, that's newish. But I I am shocked to see how they let Dracula go out because it was definitely one of those things where it's like if that wasn't his son, ain't no way Ayukar was doing nothing. To Dracula, like that was he was that dude. Now, let's see. Perhaps the next, um, Akasha, Queen of the Damned. <laughs> she was like literally walking through. It was just like be gone, and they would just burst into flames. Wasn't nobody really stopping her. And had it not been for Stuart Townsend's character Lestat in that movie, like I don't think any of the um, Twilight Vampires was messing with her. Even the original, even the old ones, like the little girl, she would have handled all of them. No problem. I don't think someone like Celine would have been able to take her out. Um, the character of Akasha, she is, she is the original vampire in the Vampire Chronicle series. So she, her power level is is up there. She's at the point where she can walk around. She's so old. She can walk around during the day and she just gets tanned. That's it. Like sunlight is not bother her anymore. So those, those would be my picks. Now you obviously have something in mind, Tony. So let me, what, what do you got? Who, who are you bringing to the table? No, I mean, 
Somebody say Blaze and get it out of the way. Advantage over me because I really don't, I don't do anime like you you all do. But <clears throat> I'm gonna have to go. With, I like I've heard of Castlevania and I've heard of oh, movies. I think I own it, and that will <laughs> be something Brent. I might Sorry. be doing it. With. What? Uh, Brent, Brent talking. Said oh, it was shoot. Team Edward. Nah. Like, okay, here. we ignore Brent. Get we ignore Brent. Here. But I'm still going with. <laughs> no. Just for Brent. So that I have seen. The one that impressed me the most was in Vampire Hunter D. There Ooh. it is. Yeah. That was my squad. That's a good one. That's a good one. That was my squad. Yes. That was, yeah. my, that, that was it. And that is a That's classic good. anime, that too. That is a good one. I didn't even think about that. Like I said, I, I don't watch a lot, but I do watch. Ah, that he's up I mean, there. He was serious. He's up there. All right. yeah, I'll give you serious. that. Yeah, Vampire Hunter D. No, oof. That's my entry. That's a that's a powerful entry too. That's 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 a good one. That is definitely a powerful entry. We're not gonna knock that one at all. Um, that kind of makes me think. Will's gonna say. Will's gonna say. Hey, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer Dracula. That's gonna be his, his answer. What? Spike? No, fuck that. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah, they, they had an episode. <laughs> no, no. They had an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer where she fought Dracula and she won. She couldn't. What was... She kept. She kept spiking him. He kept turning to dust, and then he would regenerate, and then she would spike him again. What was the What was the vampire's name? What was his name? Uh, from Buffy. Uh, Spike. Uh, no, it was, it was another one. It was another one. It was another one. one. Angel. Uh, Angel. Angel. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Now, interesting though. His thing, evil, his... evil Angel, yes. Evil Angel, yes. Was it his thing like he didn't have a soul or something? Or like was it soul? Yeah. soul? No, he, he got his soul back. Okay. And then he yeah. became good Angel. Okay. But gotcha. evil Angel was, I can't say the word because it's not time, but you know what he was. <laughs> So in the movie Buffy the Vampire Slayer that had Rutger Hauer, I'm trying to remember what vampire he played because it actually wasn't Dracula, but it was one of those like he was an ancient vampire kind of thing. And Pee Wee Herman actually played Spike in that one. And that was hilarious. He had like a 20 minute death scene and then an end credit death scene. <laughs> that was really, really funny. So that's that's just an interesting time for Buffy the Vampire Slayer having started off as that little movie. It was a B movie, but it was funny. It was I got, good. I gotta find what episode Buffy fought Dracula. So Will, you got you got a vampire entry, or David, you got a vampire entry? Someone you want to bring to this fight? I mean, I think I mean we pretty well covered it with Dracula. And I mean, we could just say Blade. That was up there with my thing, and then uh, Tony's injury was uh, very well. Thought out, so yeah, uh, I'm solid there. So that. So we got the Vampire Hunter D going up against Castlevania's Dracula. We got the obvious. Well, like, there's also the obvious answer, which is Blade. Yeah. Yeah, the obvious answer. Um, but then you got. Um, uh, no Y'all watch the originals? I'm familiar uh, with. It. The originals, oh, crap. I got, I watched like, Klaus. Like, the first two episodes. Yeah, Klaus. Klaus. Yeah, uh, he, yeah, he mentioned yeah. earlier. Because he's, uh, he's, he's that vampire high, uh, werewolf hybrid you, y'all guys were talking about earlier. Yeah. That's what it is, yeah. So if, we, you know, if we're going to throw that in there, I'll, I, that, that would probably be my bid. But at the same time, Dracula is here. Now, which, which version of Dracula you think has done the best? Do you think uh, what was his name? Luke Gross, mm. who did uh, was it? Is it Luke Gross, the one who did the last one, Dracula, and um, what was his name? The guy from the um, so he was in Immortals. He was he's he's one of Shaw's brothers from um, Fast and the Furious. The one that had the little go kart that was going, making cars go yeah, over. Uh, Luke it. Evans. Luke Evans. There you go. I called him Luke Gross. I'm like, that ain't right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Luke Evans, the vampire that he played, um, the Dracula he did. You know, I think that one, that was uh, Dracula Untold. 
And that one was, he plays the, you know, the Vlad Tepe's character or Tepe's a Tepes. Um, he plays through that character and kind of gives us, I guess, the backstory, so to speak, for those who aren't really aware of who Dracula is, you know, Vlad the Impaler and the story that kind of associates with him and just like the fact that he's one of the most violent rulers in history and that kind of thing. And the mythology surrounding Dracula comes from this guy. And Dracula Untold was, you know, I think an interesting, an interesting take as, as far as like backstory is concerned, kind of letting people know who this is and why. So if you haven't checked that out, that's a good one. Um, I think uh, Gary Oldman and Bram Stoker's Dracula. Another one with Keanu Reeves. Okay. Yeah, I can give you that one. I just like Gary Oldman, period. Right. So, I mean, you can't go wrong with Gary Oldman. Right. Um, but I think perhaps one of the worst, the worst depictions of Dracula actually came from Blade. Blade. <laughs> Blade. <laughs> Blade. I think the Dracula that, that they had in so, Blade was like... Was so Dude. Yeah, that was so yes. corny. And the dude who played in Legends, what's his name? Oh, he's the uh, fire guy. He was one of the brothers from uh, Prison Break. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Neither one of them are memorable to me, so it's fine. Yeah. Um. Oh, what is his name? Dominic. Dominic Purcell. And the other guy is Wentworth Blade, Miller. Blade. I just remember Wentworth yes. Miller because that is just such a Wentworth Miller. <laughs> I just, such a great name. But yeah, the character, the, the vampire that over if you say it. the vampire he played in Dracula, I was like, what? huh? But I mean, I guess they did kind of, maybe they powered him down a little bit to make it, you know, Reasonable for Dracula to I go against. Like he, he was just he was just juicing. That's that's what it looked like to me. Like that's all it was. He's like he's just a bodybuilder that went juicing, and then Blade had to go smack him around. Like, it wasn't but nothing just, but he was also now that weird mutated vampire from the other. Uh, let's see. So you had which one was that? Was that Blade Two? Yeah, that was the last Blade. That was. No, that, that was, was that was the one from Trinity. Yeah. Yeah. Who that had like Trinity. the dislocated he jaw. Okay. <laughs> he was, was definitely he was a little more hardcore than Dracula to me. Cause he was putting uh, he was putting paws on Blade. First of me. all, it, it won a little bit. He was he was making Blade look like the teenager in first day in karate class. <laughs> That's what he was doing. It was boring. <laughs> I mean, I think had he not been knocked into that vat of blood, it, it would have been over for him. Because he was he was getting his butt handed to him very quickly. Um, Each and every time they fought, he was getting he was getting them hands every time. Have there been any good werewolves? I, I don't. I don't know. First of all, we're not done with vampires because. Are we not? I'm just going to say... Can't my, you really be done with vampires? Favorite. There's so goddamn many of them. Yeah. <laughs> right. And on top of that, they live hey, forever. You know. First of all, I'm going to say the very, one of the first ones that got me hooked on the vampires was Dust of Dawn and Selma Hyatt. Because I would have been her foot too. Not in line. Are you talking about my wife? Yes, ma'am. I'm saying, what what happened? It's my wife right there. You know I've what? Married, I don't even I've like been snakes. Her mentally. Let me tell you something. I don't even I like snakes. My, and I was right. like, that boa is looking so nice. He's so pretty. I want one of those. I was I was definitely with you there. And even that movie, 
from Dust Till Dawn. That was that was a unique twist that I did not see coming in that movie. Those are the, you know what Danny Trejo makes a good vampire. It's always weird to see that 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 very odd transformation for some vampires where they go from just being like humans with fangs to this creature and stuff like that. And it's it's weird that you have these like this isn't even my final form kind of vampires. And it's like at some point you're gonna see vampires and they have like straight up bat wings and the whole nine. And it's you do that you kind of lose me because the whole element of being a vampire is the fact that they are just they're night owls. They're just people who live their life at night and do the things, you know, they they go about their business. And, you know, the the interesting morals surrounding um, what was it like something like uh, True Blood, where these vampires are just regular citizens because they found a way to recreate a lifeblood that doesn't require them to kill. Now, it ain't the same as real blood. And when they get real blood, it's a little different. But that makes for a whole unique aspect of the vampire community in that regard. And there was another movie that starred um, Ethan Hawke. Oh, I know what you're talking about. He was uh, something daylight day. It had your boy in it. Uh, uh what was that movie? What? It wasn't Night Blood. What, Daybreakers? Daybreakers. Daybreakers. That's and, what it was. And Daybreakers was another concept where they were generating blood so that, you know, I mean, they had like blood banks and all this type of stuff, you know, and they were basically producing blood so that they could live normal lives. And it's so interesting to think that there would be like a whole community of vampires who just want to be regular people. Last thing I'm going to do if I'm a vampire is be a regular person. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I may not be trying to get myself pitchforked or anything or, you know, burnt while I sleep. But nah, because we ain't trying to hold a nine to five. I'm not going to work. <laughs> we ain't doing that. I'm going I'm to be out here living my best vampire life. And I think it's very interesting when you when you have these concepts where just the idea that there are some morals still attached to vampirism is, is very interesting. And the idea that um, that was something that even Anne Rice touched on and introduced in the books was that not all vampires wanted to feed on humans. They didn't want to kill, basically. And then you had um, some stories where they only kill the evildoer. So, you know, these vampires, again, have a nice, good moral standing. Oh, Vicky brings up a good one. Lost Boys. Now, there's a good there's a good group of there's a good group of vampires right there, because to this day, the second boys, the first one. The Kiefer Sutherland? Yeah. Yeah. Maggots, Michael. Those are maggots you're eating. Like, I mean... I mean, they were, what, in Pasadena or something like that? Just like... And even even that... Um, it was one of those funny things. Like, you remember the little... All the little rules as far as vampires. It was like the guy wouldn't come in unless he was invited in. And all this little stuff, and you don't really catch it till you get to the end, and you're like, "Wow, he's a vampire. He's like really a vampire." And da da da. And then you go back and you watch, and you see all those little moments, and it's like, "Yeah, he did stay outside until he was invited in." And so it's like, you know, all those interesting things. You can't what vampires don't have a reflection, garlic crosses, they can't enter a place unless they're invited. Just all these unique rules for vampires. Which is fright night. Which Fright Night killed most of them. Yeah. Yeah, Fright Night was... Was it Fright Night? No, What We Do in the Shadows was the one they just redid. And that was the one they did no, with... They, uh... they, did with Fright. They, did, they redid Fright Night uh, or late, earlier. It was 10 years ago, maybe? 
It had uh, was it Colin? I think he was in it. Yeah, they did another. They did, redid Fright Night. Let me see when it came out. Now the original Fright Night, I remember watching as a kid and thinking like that was legit right. scary. And <laughs> oh. And that one was one that was just kind of like, uh, let's see, what do we got? Well, it's my computer. My internet is so slow. Fright Night. Not at Six Flags. Fright Night movie. There we go. And it was uh, 85, and then it came out in 2011. Now, that one in 2011. Oh, you know what? A really good underrated movie. Let the right one in. Yes. I saw that one. That had um Hit Girl. Yep. Um Chloe. Chloe Grace Mortz. Tag, Chloe Mortz. On the playground. That was it. And that one was that one that one was pretty good because it was like they were the they were kids and it was a unique twist in the in the telling of a vampire story. So that's what I'm going to say. If you haven't seen that, check yeah, that man, out. That yeah, and that, that twist at the end was good. Don't spoil it for me. We'll just, we'll just stop there. I'm not saying that. But, yeah, those... Fright Night was another one of those movies where the vampire had the major transformation... He looked human most of the time, but when he went into his vampire form, like, like I said, I just remember that, like, scaring the piss out of me when I was a kid and thinking, like, I probably shouldn't be watching this. Because, like you said, it was 85. I was a kid kid. Maybe I should have been watching that. <laughs> but that was one of those. You weren't a kid, and kid. They was, they was scary, man. They was scary. And it's on Hulu and Amazon Prime for anybody who needs to watch. Like, and which one is that? It's on Hulu. Uh, the right, let the right one in. It says it's on Hulu with the premium and Amazon with the premium. All right, cool. So if you have Amazon Prime, odds are you are already a Prime member. You're probably paying for the free shipping for the stuff that you order. Go check it out. That's a great movie. I enjoyed that. Um, Bright Night. I would say check out the original. I haven't seen the remake. Don't don't do the remake. That did, that's the one that had Colin Farrell in it, and it mm. wasn't that. Okay. It wasn't that good. It had uh, else was in it? I mean, it was really nobody important but Colin. He was the headline. We covered a lot on vampires. Anybody got anything nice to say about werewolves? <laughs> no one likes werewolves. <laughs> the only thing I would say nice, but well, I won't say the only thing I'll say nice about werewolves. Um. Jack Nicholson and Wolf. That's Wolf one of the first Lion. werewolf movies that come to mind. Um, Teen Wolf. Werewolf in London. I grew up on that one. I did. Silver, Silver yeah, Bullet. Silver Bullet. That was one. Um, okay, so Richard, Richard Andrew, uh, Richard Olds adds in that there's some good Korean dramas about vampire. So... Check that out. And, and the Koreans know how to make some some good movies. There's some stuff out there. I mean, just to sidetrack on this, Train to Busan was probably one of the best. Right. That's, I was trying to think how I can segue <laughs> the vampires you know at that. But it's like, yeah, out. Train you know to Busan. Whew, that's a good one. That was like one of the best ones. And they, that second one, I can't wait for it to come out. I can't wait. But let's see. So, okay. Um, other, other, you know what? I will My say that. Is a vampire. Yeah, that's what a that's a whole vampire? cartoon, and it's a little girl vampire, and it, is, yeah. Is that on Disney Plus. You talking about Vampirina? No, no, no. Vampirina is no, no. Vampirina is a separate cartoon. I know. I remember but there's Vampirina. like a. I want to say it's like a a tween show. My babysitter is a vampire. And it's like oh, okay. I want to say it's like a teenage girl or something like that. My daughter would probably know because that's that's kind of what yeah, I'm thinking vampire, about. Vampire, uh, Monster High. It has a vampire character in it that my daughter watches. Yeah. Mm. Now, now stuff like Monster High <laughs> is gonna have like some werewolves and stuff. Yeah, it's got Frankenstein, stuff like that. Hotel Transylvania, animated, stuff like that. 
I think and and just because we we can't completely skip over it like I mean we could but I'm not going to cuz my wife is maybe watching them all. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead speak on it. I was definitely team Jacob in the Twilight series cuz I could not stand the vampire Edward. Um but some of the other vampire characters some of the other characters, I thought it was pretty cool that they all had like unique talents. That was something that I hadn't kind of seen very often. And I and and that was a nice twist that all of them had like their own little special powers and abilities separate from the basics, like, oh, you're strong and you're fast and this, that, and the other. It works. Right. Like they thank you. Like you just made that so much better in my head. <laughs> like they were vampires with quirks so they each had this individual power separate from the others but i think the uh the werewolves in that movie in those movies rather were depicted much better and i like the the way they chose to represent them in terms of ethnicity um and of course, that kind of made me. That they gave me a little bit more of a personal connection to the vampire characters. I mean, the uh, not the vampire, but the uh, the liking characters, the werewolves. That I thought was very interesting. My my wife was, she was Team Jacob, and I was very glad for that because that's just, oh. <laughs> that whole thing, like when my boy decided he was going to like reveal himself to the world. <laughs> there were so many other ways they could have described that other than having him come out and like sparkle. Shame on them for that. But I also like the transformation into the werewolves that they did in that movie, as opposed to a lot of times where if you're turning into a werewolf, it takes like 10 whole minutes. Like they you can't see all just the bones cracking and stretching and right. Like it, it's it's like what if shit needs to happen right now? Okay. Right. Like, like if it's got to pop off, you in trouble because I see that and I'm getting out of here. So I hope you run really fast. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna shoot you with a silver bullet before. Right. Like, that, like, right. I got plenty of time to figure out how I'm gonna deal with you. <laughs> and so like, the I fact can get that a whole freaking sixteen round magazine before you finish what you're doing. Like, Right, and seeing it was the fact that these these werewolves could literally like run, take off the shirt, and just like boom, become a werewolf. I thought that was, and the fact that they could do it at will, you know, like not having to, it didn't have to be, it wasn't something that had to be triggered. It was just their decision to be werewolf or human. I thought that was that was quite impressive. All right, sorry about that. My web, my internet just ran out. I don't know what's going on. I think my router blew. So uh, I'm on, I got to do my phone now. No problem, no problem. Ugh. But that's that's all I'm gonna. That's all the attention I'm gonna give Stephanie Meyer. Other than to say that, if I'm not mistaken, a new a new story just came out. A new book just came out. My sister, her friends, they posted it the other day, and I just happened to see it. And they were all kind of chit chatting with each other about how they were gonna like, girl, let me borrow the book when you're done. I'm still waiting on my copy, and mine hadn't even been shipped yet. Da da da. So. It's a good series. My sister read all the books and my wife owns all the DVDs, so I bought it for her on Blu-ray. I have watched through all of them. I got through the first two. I could not finish the series at that point. I just had to see how the story was yeah, going to go. I was go. the same way with my wife. I'm just sitting here dragging. Like, yo. I, I got hyped at the end with, with, with the fight. Right. Man. I was about to say, now that last one wasn't too bad. I'm not going to front. Like, I, I was actually watching that one. It was like, come on. It's on. You ready? We watching this? Let's do this. And, um, I, I liked the the one girl's ability to like show somebody the future. Yeah, the projection. The pre cop. That and the way they incorporated it. Oh, I give them credit for that last movie. I I don't know the ending of the last movie. They they get yeah, a golf clap ending. for that one. They get a golf the clap. The ending. For that one. The ending of the last movie, not the movie itself. Well, not not the whole movie, but you know, 
just be honest with yourself. It's the ending that you like. I can back that statement, but I cannot back the last movie statement. The twist. That's really what it comes down to. That's what it is. The twist. Because everything else up to that was a waste. No, I mean, like, when we first saw that they was going to fight, and they did they charge, and they did they charge, and they got into it, that was entertaining. I'm not going to say good, but that was entertaining. That kept my attention. I was watching the fight take place and seeing everything go down and that kind of like everything built up to that. So it was it's a little bit more than just the ending, probably like the last fourth of the movie. Maybe still about halfway the to the end. That's still technically the ending. So like the the last part, we'll say that the last part. The but last uh, 15 minutes. No, oh, that fight was like, OK. I'm again. Okay, that's what it is. We're not gonna, we're not gonna break the movie out and find the scene, but that it was that portion. And uh, it's a two-hour, fourteen-minute, thirty-second mark. Too. <laughs> I only like Look, segments yeah. from here to here. Just cut that, make that the whole movie, and you got me. But I mean, that's that's kind of how it went down, and it was, you know, like I said, that part that was enjoyable. So outside of Werewolves and vampires. What other creatures do you think deserve as much attention in movies? Like, do we need more dragons in movies? No. Drakes and you know, I could I could go for another leprechaun movie. Ah, uh, you can leave that where it was. <laughs> Come on, leprechaun in the was. hood. Leprechaun in the hood. Come on now. No. Wild. No. What was the last dragon movie that you really enjoyed? How to Train Your Dragon? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that Yo, would probably... And that last one was really good. Yeah, the arc was great. Like, I love the arc. Like, they did really well with that. With that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think freaking that dragon heart has a special, special place for me. I've been watching it several times when I was younger. See, and dragon heart, just because of, like, I don't know, the young geek in me knowing who the voice was, that kind of... I don't know. That just made that so much cooler for some reason. Like yeah. it's like, oh, listen to how he talks. That's so cool. Oh, you know that Sean Con. <gasps> so it was like just for some reason made it better. Not that it really did, but for some reason. Um, I don't know. I think the only time I've ever seen like a Pegasus in a movie was Clash of the Titans. Um, Animated Hercules. Oh yeah, Hercules. And yeah. you know what? He that Pegasus. Was it, was it Percy Jackson? Uh, Valkyrie from Thor. She rocking the Pegasus. But is that a Pegasus though? We we don't know. I don't think they ever that they were just winged beasts. Well, it was winged freaking you know horses. But, you know. I don't think it was Eric, specifically Eric, Eric the name yeah. horse Pegasus. Yeah. Like that's that's a individual Ugh. character but i i don't know what you would call those horses if they're not all pegasi like or the pegasuses Pegasus. right the Pegasus. pegasuses <laughs> like i like the pegasuses <laughs> that were in the movies um that that's a character that i well that's that's a creature i think should be shown more and i think honestly like you mentioned the percy jackson series the percy jackson series has done a decent job of visualizing a lot of mythological creatures. Um, yes. Even if it was Aragon, Brent, go to the corner. Yeah. <laughs> go to the corner. Ah. <laughs> but they had um, Brandon T. Jackson played. Okay, it says we were interrupted. We're back. Brandon T. Jackson played a. Um, a satyr? Right, a satyr. And that's like the half goat. And that, you know what, that kind of reminds me of Mr. Tumnus from uh, Chronicles of Narnia, Lion, Witch, in the Wardrobe. Phil. Phil the TV. Yeah, yeah, Phil from Hercules, yeah. See, another one of those times where it was the character, the actor that made the character better. Yeah, and they're about to do a live action Hercules. They're talking about it, so, that, so everybody's positioning for Danny DeVito to come back and play it. I mean, is it really the same character if he doesn't? Like, it'd be different if he wasn't alive to do it, but he is. So, come on. He is. I mean, he he fits the you know. Do you, do you really want to see a half naked Danny DeVito? 
mean, we've seen it before. I mean, I mean do you watch good. It's Always Sunny? <laughs> yeah, that's like true. every other episode, he's. I mean, it's, it's something that it's, it's there. Like it, it's already there. Like I can't get rid of it. So like, like it is like, what it is when it comes to that. Yeah, so I mean, it's I, I it's. Feel. And besides, they'll they'll do all the prosthetics and stuff, and I'm sure he'll be very satyr like. Very similar to the way that um, James McAvoy was. See, it's funny because just thinking about that with James McAvoy as Tumnus and then, of course, like thinking about some of the different characters he's played. Huh, that, w- that would be an interesting... I don't know. Like something's developing as far as like a conversation piece for that. Like best on-screen depiction of a character or something like that. I don't know. Y'all help me with that one later. That that might make for a great discussion. But um I think that's it for the mythological creatures. Like I don't really Minotaurs, Krakens, Phoenixes. You got a bunch of stuff you can play with, yeah. I mean, but which ones are gonna be practical to what's the context in which you're gonna see a Phoenix? We saw that in Harry Potter. I mean, can we get a good succubus? I could roll with one of those. I could rock and roll with a succubus. That you could actually. That's a series right there. there. There's no way their movie is going to the theaters. There's no fucking way. But, <laughs> I mean, it's we can three find a night. movie, but it's not going to be in the site. Right. right. <laughs> We're not talking about the porn her version. Now, right. now, let me say this: given all Remade. of the conversation, and see, and this is kind of funny because this is how chain reaction thoughts work. So, dragons. We were talking about dragons a moment ago. That made me think of Mushu. Mushu made me think of Mulan. Mulan, of course, translates to what we're talking about now. So why wouldn't it be a direct-to-video release or a Netflix exclusive or something on Prime or Hulu, especially given the budget that Netflix is running with these? They could do a whole series on just succubus. In fact, there is a... Hold on. Trying to remember... There was a show on Netflix, actually, I think, that had a... I think that, that was the lady that used to suck out stuff. I remember that one. It was sci-fi, wasn't it? Was it, was it on sci-fi originally? Because she used to suck the white light. It was a whole bunch of them. Lost Girl. She was suck- That's what it was. That was sci-fi. Let's see. And Lost Girl is now on Netflix. Uh... 2010, and that oh, was really. Yep. Uh, it left Netflix in in April, didn't it? Um, hey, y'all go playing with my emotions again. Seasons one of five left in April. Okay, but that was that was just saying like that was one. But see, given that they got that from Sci-Fi, they could go do their own or you, you can know, switch it up. A sucky bus into a storyline very easily. It could Netflix is on fire with this. I mean, they they're taking a lot of you know properties and stuff like that and turning them into something when you know big studios don't want to pick it up and they're able to put something together. So I mean, I commend Netflix for that. I think we're getting a lot you know a lot better content on Netflix just because they're willing to <coughs> pick up the film. Because actually, Ryan Reynolds, I'm gonna do a plug here real quick. Ryan Reynolds Uh-oh. is actually getting ready to film a movie for Netflix and stuff like that, but he actually put out something. Uh, I can't remember the exact name of it, so that, but it's actually a program, it's a website, so that it's something with uh, maximum effort or maximum growth or something like that. But he's actually paying out of his salary for like 10 to 20 people of color, biracial, or whatever, so that to actually come and train on how to be in the movie business and stuff like that. He's paying out of his own pocket for that next project. You have to look into that, then. But yeah. you know, it's yeah, interesting yeah, because. The Hitman's Bodyguard was produced by Netflix and released in theaters. And that was the Samuel L. Jackson, Ryan Reynolds, Salma Hayek. I enjoyed it. Was it? That was actually that was a fantastic movie. And it wasn't until I was like it was halfway through, you know, I think it was like uh as we were watching the credits and things like that, we saw, you know, this was like a Netflix movie. And it was like, oh, what? And now, of course, they're doing the was it the hitman hitman's wife bodyguard it's because of selma hayek right and mm-hmm. see and that's the sequel to the first one 
But again, Netflix is getting in this thing and they're like actually making movie movies and putting them out there. So, you know, that's uh that might be our second topic right there because that's something else. Cuz of course that it's still it, just like anytime the anytime Netflix comes up, I I think about like just the whole conversation about Netflix versus theater and then, you know, Christopher Nolan doesn't want tenant released direct to video. He wants it only in theaters. Mulan, as I was just saying, that's getting ready to come out. Um, they're releasing that on Disney Plus. You can get that right away. I think it's like what, thirty bucks? Um, yeah. And you get to keep it. You know, well, you get to keep it as long as you have your subscription. Right. It goes I'm good for four years, thanks to a little pack. <laughs> um but that is actually a part of the, you know, like when you make a purchase through Disney Plus, so long as you have your subscription to Disney Plus, it's included with that. And, you know, the argument for that a lot of times, if you spend $30 through Disney Plus, you get to see it day one when it releases. But then in comparison, mm -hmm. you look at like more than likely if you waited a month or two, it'll probably be available on, say, Amazon Prime for Twenty four ninety nine, and then you would own it digitally right out without having to be relying on your subscription, your membership or anything like that as it would just be yours to keep. Um, yeah. That whole video on demand is going to be interesting to see how that moves forward. And I wonder what they're going to do as far as continuing content. And that's where stuff like this comes, where we can get some new and original ideas. They could go back and they could redo Lost Girl or they could come up with new original storylines. And that's where the idea of like what types of characters would we want to see? You know, like I think they could there's there's plenty of stories out there. And when it comes to some of these different creatures, uh, you know, we've kind of had the same ones over and over. They've done vampires to death in movies, in my opinion. Werewolves, not quite as much, but werewolves are pretty much there. Um, you know, Fantastic Beasts was something that finally gave us some new creatures to see. Something we hadn't really seen on screen before. And these were a little bit more along the lines of like magical creatures. So that was refreshing in a sense. Um, we need a movie about Chupacabras. I'm just throwing that out there. Chupacabras. You know what? I'm with it. I'm, I'm saying like we we need the we need chupacabras we need the jackalope we need <laughs> you know we need a gorgon we I need know. a gorgon and we had Medusa freaking in a couple different things with like what Flash or Rapid the Titans or something like that uh, yeah she's been in both the classes she was in Percy Jackson yeah so she she's been around she's yeah, the Gorgons in general have been they've they've been fairly well represented, especially given you know the history with Greek mythology. So, and we've gotten a lot of Greek mythology over the years. Now we're starting to get a little bit more um, versed in Norse mythology, and you know a few years back we had Beowulf. Oh, I love Beowulf and Beowulf. some of the different characters that were involved with that. So that was one of those times where we got to see some unique unique characters um the series of you know we got a good dragon in the hobbit Small. um like about a golem i don't know my grandma can pull off a golem i think if the story is cuz the only golem that i can think of was in Supernatural. Oh, first of all, <laughs> no. We're talking about important things here. Yeah. All right. First of all, <laughs> you're not gonna sit here and slant the Pokemon like that, sir. <laughs> While I'm here, there. no, sir. <laughs> what we not gonna do? <laughs> Love how we sat there quiet. He scared. heard like he heard nothing else. He heard what? 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 Nah, I was, <laughs> I was here. I was here, and then he's he wanted to start popping off. It's time. Let's go. <laughs> he just wanted to get you reengaged. That's what I'm saying. But look, I'm I'm about to try to reconnect to my router. So I'm going to leave here and try to get back on my computer. Cool. All right. So, so I'm, you know what? I really me. can't think of any golems 
in. I was saying, it's not really a lot, is there? I mean, and that's well, that's one of those notable anyway. So let's see, is there? Hmm. So apparently, there was a movie in 2019. That was rated fairly high. Really? Yeah. Hmm. It's just called The Golem, right? Correct. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, let's say 86% tomato meter. Okay. Audience score 43%. Nah, okay, there it is. There it is. Because <laughs> it, it never balances. Like, you know what? I'm going to go through their website one day and I'm going to find something that is rated both high on the tomato meter and the audience score. I think the only God thing that comes to you. mind is like Spider-Verse, probably. Probably. As someone mentioned, is the lowest grossing Spider-Man movie. Really? Now, I will, I will point out that... It was a sleeper. Nobody really paid attention. To he re- now but, first off, hey, that's fair. That was a repost. That was not his original post. He was reposting with someone else commenting. And as I read through that, because I had to read it three or four times just to make sure I was understanding the context in which it was being discussed. But basically, he the original poster was pointing out the fact that that movie should not be the lowest grossing, considering how good it was. And because people did not appreciate it as much as they should have, they did not deserve the movie. Like, mm. like you don't get to enjoy this wonderful piece of art because you don't recognize how great and fantastic it is. It should not be the lowest grossing Spider-Man movie considering how fantastic it is. And I think that was the <laughs> context in which it was being posted. First off, first off, <laughs> if it's such a, a, a great freaking movie and people don't deserve it, freaking, he's going to sit there and watch that movie by himself and have no one to talk about it with if he feels that way about it. He's going to stare at a wall and talk about it. Like, yes, the movie was great. And stuff like that. But that's just some selfish shit to say. I don't give a fuck who you are. Like, that's just bullshit. <laughs> All right. He is after 11. He is after 11. All right. Talk your shit. Talk your shit. Yeah, nah, I, I mean, but tell us, tell us how you really feel. But, yeah, think about it. Say, freaking, the, with the Marvel in the animated department and stuff like that, like, we all know DC animated movies are like they're pretty pretty good with sort of that. Like they do a really good job with those with that. You know, Marvel is starting to you know push more out to that territory, especially in the last couple of years, sort of that with you know their movies. And they had two of their movies, two Marvel movies, and so sort of that freaking win Oscar for best animated with Big Hero Six and Spider Man into the Spider Verse. And so sort of that so it's like, you know, they're they're kind of skirting that territory and they're figuring stuff out. But again, with a lot of that stuff, like they really have to take their time and really deep dive into that world of animation to understand how to really make that that movie good. I mean, you've got all the special effects and all that kind of stuff with, you know, the MCU movies, which I think are fantastic, but it's a whole different art form doing it in animation. So that and it it, it effectively te- to me, it tells a better story in animation so that you can really get exactly what you're trying to get across. Stuff with animation, correct. I mean, you definitely have a certain freedom with animation that you don't have in live action. There are limitations in live action, but you can basically draw anything, and in doing that, it, it does give you that that freedom that's just unmatched. Um, I would certainly agree with you there. And Marvel has definitely, definitely stepped up in terms of their animation. Um, it, it is. It's becoming less of a joke to say Marvel animation versus DC animation, because of course Marvel got their movies down packed. DC suck when it comes to their movies, but DC got the animation game on point, and Marvel kind of sucked when it came to the animation. And now Marvel's really making a name to say that they're starting to get the hang of transitioning that same energy that they have in their cinematic movies into their animated movies and that's something that like literally and we're not gonna 
get into that comparison because we talked about that for almost two hours the other night. But like that would be where DC would have needed to improve is simply follow the model that's there with your animation. And um, yeah, if Spider-Verse is representation of the direction they're going and what they're going to keep doing, I'm all for it. I'm for it. Because even on, um, and this was as a result of Disney Plus, there is a, there's a Spider-Man animated series on Disney Plus. It's actually really good. And yeah, that's not made by Sony. That's all, that's all actual Marvel. So like that anything less than 44 minutes and stuff like that is actually by Marvel. Anything more than 44 minutes is Sony. Gotcha. Yeah. This one, this is a, uh, it's like a, it's a teenage Spider-Man in high school kind of thing, and it's, I want to say it would start, it probably started off on like Disney XD, but yeah, it's got it's got that similar animation style. But yeah, which, so I'm talking about. Uh, let me let me look at it. Let me see what you're talking about. Because that one was. Uh, I actually haven't seen this. That one was that one was really good, and I've I've enjoyed kind of skimming through that. Because like when I got the Disney Plus, of course, you know, I was like, well, first of all, let me go through and catch up on everything that I. Have not seen that I want to see. Um, right. I, I went and rewatched the animated X Men off rip. Like I just that, felt that, that was the first thing I watched. Hundred <laughs> percent, because you know Cyclops. And seeing like I, I got to checking out um, the the Marvel Avengers, uh, Avengers Assemble, things like that. And somebody was saying like you know um, Agents of Smash the other day, and like that was me. I've I've caught an episode or two of that, and they have some interesting. It's strange. it's strange. Yeah, like they got some interesting episodes that don't really follow what the story is. But it was mainly just a lot of chaos, and it was a good introduction to some additional characters that I wasn't really familiar with. And they they did talk about um. Uh, like they had an episode that dealt with Maestro. Um, yeah, it was a twist. It wasn't true. Well, I mean, like, you know, but I said dealt. You see, I said dealt with Maestro. And I agreed with you. Why are you being so defensive? All I'm not being defensive. I was. I was clarifying my point. You were. <laughs> you were breaking down further, and I'm like, well, that's why I didn't say it was Maestro. I said it dealt with Maestro. But I mean, the animation aspect from from Marvel. Yeah, I like I like the direction they're going. I want them to continue the way they're going. I want to see what else they have, and they need to just keep it up because I'm liking it. They're doing well. I agree. Still not going to change my allegiance. I'm still all DC. They all day, every day. <laughs> I ain't got to think twice about it. All day, every day. I think in this room, there are probably like five or six Marvel items. It's two of them over here because I literally have an Iron Man and a Captain America right there together. Um, that might be it. I don't know. I had to look. I, I'll find them and point them out next go round. But in comparison, you know, that's your Marvel room over there. Like, this is the DC room. That's the Marvel room. It's so obviously quality over quantity. <laughs> we just, I'm going to give you that. I like that iron heart. You see that? Let's see, where is it? Uh, oh, man, it's just, ooh, just off right there. That's that's the Superman statue right there. Invincible iron. Now, was that the, is that iron heart number one? Yeah. That's what's up. Now, see each of these right here, this little stack? If you can see my screen, that little stack right there. Mm-hmm. All of those, those are all individual comics. And just to the right of that, off screen, are all the graphic novels. And yeah, so I got all the graphic novels boxed up until I clear a new bookcase. <laughs> See, well, since yeah. I've been I've been rearranging that whole room, and hopefully soon I will be recording from that room as I got the I got the go ahead, I got the green light, I got the thumbs up. We ordered the chair and the desk today, computers. <laughs> Computers getting ordered and everything else, and you know, because the wife don't like being displaced. <laughs> so I was like, "Well, I need somewhere that I can do this and do that, and blah 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 blah." And she was just like, "Okay, fine, just 
just order it. It was like, yes. So, so basically, <laughs> you were, you just kept nagging her until you got your way. Actually, and you know the funny thing? I did not nag her, but I am recording. We had to do a setup. In the, we had to do a setup in the bedroom. We have a sitting area in our bedroom. And when she, of course, started working from home. Now, the funny thing is, just a little backstory. Now, I've been asking to build a new computer. I was like, you know, I want to build a new computer, one that can do this, that, da, 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 da. I was trying to get this new computer built. She wasn't trying to hear it. She was like, we don't really need a computer. Laptop's fine, yada, yada, yada. Well, you know, back in March, when all of a sudden she had to start working from home, and I was like, well, here's the laptop. She was like, oh, we need a new computer. Uh, <laughs> how the tables have turned. I see. Okay. We, you, you know what? You're absolutely right, baby. You need this for work. It's different. <laughs> it is not because of anything else. So let's make it happen. Third eye open. So I was like, look, Third you know what? Eye open. <laughs> let's make it happen. We will get you a computer for work. And then she was like, well, you know, um, I have two monitors at work and I can't do the same things here that I can do at work because I only have the one monitor. And I was like, okay, no problem, man. You want two monitors? We would get you two monitors. We would make that happen. Mm-hmm. So we dropped a video card in the computer. We got her two monitors. We got a setup. She's good. So now we have this going. nice little computer with two monitors, the whole setup, the whole kit caboodle does everything we needed to do. So when it came time for me to start recording Gag Rizzle gig, guess where we went? Mm. To that good computer in the house with two monitors, the whole nine. So that means that when I'm like, recording, no, I, I need my I need my space. You need to go back over there. All right, just just get what you need. Just go back over there. And so when it came down to like you know we're recording, and of course, and it's funny because I remember saying on the live, I was like, yeah, we're gonna do 20 minutes. It's like clearly these are gonna be two hour sessions. Everybody plans for two hours. Anybody tried to fake <laughs> like it wasn't gonna be two hours. It just is what it is. But the cool thing is if you've made it to this portion of the video, I would simply say. If this comes up on YouTube, you know, you can always put it, have it playing on YouTube and just listen to it like a podcast. You don't have to watch everything. We most of the stuff that we do is conversation. Occasionally we show a little this, show a little that. But most of what's happening is just the conversation we're having. So that's what you need to focus on. And uh, you can just listen and get these views up so I can start monetizing this thing and we can really go go some places. Sure. With it. But um so I guess this is where I'm supposed to say like, subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notified when we post new true. content. <laughs> I'll probably start saying that and throw it at the beginning or something. I don't know. I don't I don't want to well, when we get to that point, I'll start saying that. I get I'll be used to saying it by then. But since I'm doing this recording, of course, in the sitting area in our bedroom, and these things tend to run for about two hours. She she recognized and realized that, you know, you have a really nice office. And of course, that was what I wanted for my backdrop. You know, I want this. That's why I have it. That's why I have it. Inside out sheet. Right. You see, I can't be I can't be trying to rep the Superman sheet no more. It was it wasn't cutting it. So what I did today was I actually found my old backdrop that I used to use so that I could use green screen effect. And I uploaded a picture of my office so that it would be available as my backdrop as I get prepared to now have my desk, my gaming chair, get me a computer, get my dual monitor set up, move my camera down there, have my microphone, get my ring light, get everything right and and be prepared to actually like do these videos. And I might be able to, since it'll be down there with the console and everything else, I might be able to hook up some Let's Plays, run a cable, a connector, do some video capture, Cause low key, I'm a, I'm gonna get a decent system. I'm gonna get a decent rig, and I'm gonna have to throw in a video card capable to play some games if I decide that's the route I want to go. So you know, I mean, well, if you do, I mean, just know that Spider Man is only on one one system. Man, look here. <laughs> Man, look here. So, but you know what? That's that's gonna be. That's actually we talked about that as well as far as how we were gonna go about getting the. Uh, the PS4, I mean the PS5 and the X and the new Xbox and whatnot. And uh, I'm gonna just say if you don't have it, this is my tip for the day. There's this uh, app you can download called Digit. Matter of fact, I kind of want to get sponsored for this. I'm gonna contact them and let them know that I'm shouting them out for this because this is how I've been getting everything that I want to get. You download this app Digit, and it basically pulls money from your account randomly and puts it in the savings account. And it does it 
fairly frequently based on your current spending habits. Now, you have access to the money at any time, so if something happens and too much comes out and you wasn't ready for it, da 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 But when you have like a budget in mind and you want to save for something, you can literally create a new savings, a new savings for this, for that, for the other. And like if I'm like, oh, yeah, the PS5, it comes out when? Let's go ahead and set up a digit for that. You put your goal amount, the date that you want to have it saved by, Every time you look, you see you getting closer and closer to that goal, and it just does it for you automatically. So you ain't got to worry about being disciplined. And every week, I'm going to take $10 and put it in the savings towards this goal. Uh uh. Just go about your normal life day to day, and bam, your money's there. So I already got my digit set up for the PS5. I'm going to set up another one for the Xbox. And I'm going to have to dip into those digits and change, move, move the slider down a little bit for the date so I can get some of this money and get my setup going in the office. But I gotta buy four PS5, so the Xbox not the way. <laughs> nah, I would I would buy one, and I would give a good start for those other four people. Because <laughs> well, I know you I, buying I mean, them as I gifts. Got, I'm, get, I'm getting two PS5s for myself. So that, well, then cool. then those other three, they would get well, like a hundred and fifty dollar gift card towards it or something. Well, the other two are for deployed service members. So there you go. Trying to secure that stuff so when they do get back home, because I don't know how scarce it's going to be. Just trying to secure something for them. Let's we'll see how it works. You know, they got the whole limit one right now, so I got to figure out how I'm going to run this. You know, I don't work at you know said particular store anymore, so I can't you know make sure things happen how I need them to happen. I mean, I don't even know if there are five stores you could contact anymore. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I think there might still be two out here on the east side. I know the one uh, Stonecrest ain't there, but I think Covington and the Conyers are still there. Yep. So that's that's two locations. And you got rid of one of Stonecrest? Stonecrest, gone, gone. Yes, yeah, Stonecrest is hella gone. Ain't been there. Heard that name in years. Yeah, that one's gone, gone. I meant to actually go by there, snap a picture, and uh, send it to T. I just hadn't been to the mall in so long. Well, it was. It wasn't supposed to be that quick, but uh, you know, Corona. Yeah, I know the one over here by me on Windward Parkway, and so like that that one just up and disappeared, and so like that like with no warning, it was just gone. So. Yeah, freaking! I gotta, I gotta figure out some contacts and stuff like that because I need to be able to make multiple pre-orders. No, close. That was the wrong window that opened up. I see that. Uh, I got our, I got our new logo sent to me. Oh yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good. And uh, I wanted to try to open that, but it opened it over us and so I'm trying to move it out the way so I can see it but um let's see if it will open that it's still mm. opening it in here which I don't want to do okay he sent them all so I, I, I'll play with them later and we'll have the new logos updated I don't want to keep throwing that in on video letting everybody see it'll be a surprise we'll pop it off all at the same time <laughs> but um Let's see. So, I is there any last thoughts? We are coming up on our two-hour mark, and I think we have stumbled through this last little 30 minutes pretty good. Uh, <laughs> but that is how we do. And the funny, the funny, but I mean, this is how we talk anyway. These are our conversations normally. Like when, I mean, they might be a little bit more censored here than they would normally be, but yeah, only a little bit, only a little bit. Um, <laughs> But no, I mean, like this, these are the type of conversations we have, and I think we have some really good discussions. Um, I love the viewer participation, so I want to thank everybody that tuned in. Um, hopefully we, we got to all your points. Um, I love it when people have something they want to add. It shows us that you, you like us, you really like us, you're watching us, and we'll continue to try to um, keep this content good and available for you and continue to include you all in. Um, I'm thinking perhaps maybe next chat, maybe we 
Maybe we bring in a guest. We find a okay. member that wants to jump in and your glare. Yeah, I was about to say your glare is kind of throwing it off. Just hold him up. Hold him up. Oh, Gonna man. highlight him. Oh. Hey, just look at him. Are we just throwing up random things? I mean, what are we doing? Hold on, I got some random stuff. Yeah, I gotta get a nice little black light for this. Hold on, David. Yeah, what's up? How does it make you feel? Uh, oh, oh, oh. lost, invisible? lost. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, right. You know what? I'm going through the same thing Sam going through. The complete series of something. <laughs> I had the ghost what is, face fade out. What is that? Um, I was like, what Dragon happened? Ball GT. <gasps> Okay, that that actually made me happy. Uh, I mean, it's the, it's the box set. I just had to get it. You know what's funny? Really, for the I longest didn't time, see the entire series. For the longest time, my argument was GT counts because I watched it. Look, anybody who I had a problem with I haven't GT, seen all of it. So I'll make my I watch. I'll make it. my reaction afterwards. But so far, it's not as bad as people have said it is. Because people just been ragging on it, but it's not actually that bad. It's is it as, is it as good as no. it is. It Dragon is a Ball thing. Z? No, it totally is a thing. It exists. That's all I got for it. <laughs> it exists. <laughs> That's all I have. I, I don't. It counts. Hate look, it or I don't love it. Look, I'm. I, I like the look. I'm gonna I say like this. The furry red people. I do. At the time that it came out. It was I'm on, uh, not necessarily the beginning of the internet, but being able to find content online was much more challenging than it is today. Okay, right. the struggle that I had in getting all of those—I mean, we, we're talking like the LimeWire and Napster days. You didn't do I didn't I didn't do LimeWire. That's how you give everybody in your family a virus. I had I specifically had a computer for LimeWire. Okay, then that's. That was the only thing that computer did. And I would take the contents off of that, put them on different drives and move them from computer to computer as necessary. But by that time it was already scrubbed and it was cool. Yeah. But the difficulty I had in acquiring all of the episodes of GT to watch the series when it was originally available, that meant something to me. So Dragon Ball GT has always counted in my head because of the struggle I had to watch it. And it's digitally remastered. See, yeah. and the fact that it's just like there and available, like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to go get that. Like, I don't want to get that. I got to get that. And plus, I like. Forget, I forget how much I paid for it. But Super it Saiyan 4 was a thing. Like, come on now. Man was, my man was raw. Super Saiyan 4. 4 was serious. 4 was serious. But I get that, you know, him not going Super Saiyan 4 since it wasn't canon. We gonna go from three to God, and then all the stuff they did with that blue hair. That, you know what? We're not gonna do Dragon Ball Z tonight. Super we can do Saiyan Dragon Ball God, Super Saiyan. That's like the <laughs> dumbest thing. I was like, come on now. I mean, you got Ultra Instinct, then you got Master Ultra Instinct, and then still, that's not enough to beat somebody. I mean, what's the point? I mean, all it takes is a well-timed laser shot, but you know we ain't that's gonna go. We're gonna get into that. Time, so. look here, look here, look we ain't gonna get into that. That's <laughs> another. That's another day. I will hey, never I'll... let the, I will never let you Dragon Ball Z fans forget that Goku got almost killed by a rifle by somebody that's not even important. Actually, not forget that. I'm gonna go back even further, and make it real simple. My man chose not to take his medicine. Yep. <laughs> my man's my man's died of a heart attack. <laughs> yes, sir. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> yes, all sir. of this physical training. All of this physical training you doing. And he gets killed all the time. A heart attack? He died. Nah, well, see, he doesn't even get killed all the time. It's not even that much. That much. It's He's only died. Much. No, 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 no. Now see here's He's the funny only thing. Died, like what? Three, three times? I was about to say, in terms of Dragon Ball continue, he's in in, in their continuity, he has literally only died. Four times. That is it. Died four times. How many times? Everybody in the fucking world died. (laughs) This is true. But everybody died. Now, that's that's fine. The real question is if you add in the times he came close to dying. Oh, no, that, no, 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 no. That's not fair. Be here all night. (laughs) That's not fair. (laughs) 
<laughs> because the one thing about it, and 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 it's Tuesday. See, like, okay, it's two oh five. We only gonna spend a couple minutes on this, okay? But we can come back and <laughs> no, do a not. whole. <laughs> we can come back and do a whole episode of Drag Ball Z if y'all want to. But part of the saying, we call brain. Part of the saying of uh, physiology is the fact that the closer they come to death, the more powerful they are able to come back. Zenkai boost. In addition to that, Goku deserves to get his butt handed to him the way he has because can't nobody else do it. He is their strongest fighter. And you got people who are more powerful than he ever was coming to the planet, trying to take over. So the first thing they're going to do is slap him around. That's the mistake. Instead of slapping him around, you need to kill him. Don't don't waste time playing with him because see, Vegeta's like, okay, you better kill me while you got the shot. Because if you don't, find out. if you don't, <laughs> Like he already knows how it goes for saying so. He was like, you know, you're a fool. Like when uh, Yajirobe gave his sword to Krillin, and Krillin was looking at him, and Goku was like, no, don't kill him. That was your first mistake right there. The <laughs> Should have let him handle that business and handle that. Dude came. But Vegeta would have been the like, they're like, hey, right through the heart. <laughs> you know, finish it. So who died the most times? The most uh, times. Chaozu. Chaozu. No. Hold on, I'm gonna look this up. I, I know somebody is telling this. He keep killing himself. Though. I mean, he's just blowing the fuck up. That's his only. Chao Tzu. Chao Tzu and Goku, like they're the most right. Goku's been uh, wished back three times. Krillin's been wished back. Krillin's twice. been wished back twice. Krillin died. Like okay, no, all right. So, so here it is. Here it is. The entire population of Earth died the most <laughs> four times. I can see that. Okay. So they did always blow stuff up. Krillin has died three times. Piccolo has died three times. Chaozu has died three times. Frieza has died three times. Cell died three times. Goku died twice. Twice? Twice. Wait, wait. Wait, hold Goku, on, hold on. Goku okay. was killed wait, by wait. Raditz? Or Piccolo? Techni- yeah, Piccolo technically Piccolo. Piccolo, but during the battle with Raditz. That put him on uh, Snake Way. Freaking, uh, he died fighting Cell. Hold on, I'm about to look at it. Hold on. Yeah, he blew up. Actually, no. No, 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 no. He didn't die fighting Cell. Well, he was already dead, wasn't he? No, he died fighting Cell. No, he died fighting Cell. He died fighting Cell, right? Yeah. Hold on, I'm, I'm about to look at it. Hold on. Hold he on. teleported Cell. Okay. He, he bowed out of the fight. Gohan came in to, to finish up. He was basically like, all right, Gohan, I'm tagging you in. Gohan tags in, defeats Cell for the most part as far as the Cell games is concerned. Cell regenerates himself, comes back, does that whole, like, I'm finna blow up bit. He then teleports himself to King Kai's okay. planet. So so here, 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 here it is. Here it is. And so he died, he died because he died from, like, you know, Piccolo get, killing Raditz. He died again um, teleporting Cell away. Um, the third time didn't happen in this timeline. It happened in the future timeline. Was the heart virus? Yes, he yeah. hasn't died since. So in an alternate timeline, in an alternate in, in timeline, he died timeline, he died yeah, from the heart attack. He, started, he died a third time. In this timeline, he only died twice. So when he teleports off with Cell, that's, that's a death. That's that's the last death that he's had. So everything that took place after Cell was when he came back and he got the day pass. Yeah, right for boo yes yeah he was the ghost yes so he was still dead yeah he wasn't alive when boo saga was around well he he wasn't but then some weird loophole happened and then he get he got brought back to life i was like nah he was alive for boo <laughs> at at o- like near originally the end. yeah, yeah. Originally, he was only supposed to be, he was only supposed to be able to come back for the day for the tournament, and that was where he was going to yeah. finally get to fight Vegeta. Vegeta decides to um, get the Majin powers. He he goes with the the wizard Bibbity, and it was a, no Bobbity. Which one? The little one, Bobbity. Bobbity, Bibbity, Bobbity, 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 that's when he comes back and gets ready to fight. And at that point, he still kind of has the halo 
Or no, he doesn't actually have the halo at that time because he's been allowed a day pass to come and participate as part of this tournament. Since those events right. continued as part of that tournament, I think that's where the Kais agreed that, okay, we really need you to stay and fight, boo. So I'll tell you what we'll do. As long as you promise to come back afterwards, we'll let you stay. Yeah. And that's kind of what happened. And then... Some, yeah. Uh, somebody somebody agreed. Didn't somebody agree to trade places with him temporarily or during that time? Uh, because I feel like that's why he was allowed no, to it stay. Was, it was a... Th I think it was a thing with, like, the fusion. And then, like, they got absorbed by Boo. And then, for some reason, being absorbed by Boo undid death somehow it was some weird it was some weird bullshit that that boo. whole boo the whole boo saga fantastic as it was was very hard to follow um yeah. outside of the fights like just all kind of rules being broken and you know and then it was like you had fat boo and skinny boo and kid boo and boo you boo, boo, evil, boo boo then you had evil boo evil boo is it is it is it hard to believe that that wasn't the hardest thing to comprehend that whole saga <laughs> <laughs> like the boo thing was easy everything else is just like oh, keeping okay. up with boo was the simple part because yeah. all of the boos were pretty much dumb boo every time he until had, every he time he mad. absorbed somebody he was a new boo right yeah he's like go ahead, that was boo, easy to keep up with so, oh he's yeah and then like okay we got the we got kid boo so that's there it is we're done so but yeah, you got the whole thing with with the uh, yeah, I remember Spopovich. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, yeah. But yeah, all right. So this is okay. I found I found a list. So Gohan died once, um, which was alongside everybody dying on Earth. Uh, Blue died twice. Uh, Trunks died twice. Master Roshi died twice. We're just counting the main timeline, right? It's just the main timeline. Okay. Vegeta died twice. Android 17 died twice. Yamcha died... Yo, really? Yamcha died twice? Huh. Yeah, he just a pussy. Damn. Uh, Tien died twice. Uh, go okay, no, so all the times that we thought he died, he didn't really die. He's just, like, almost there. But, um... Okay, Goku died twice. Cell died three times. Frieza died three times. Chiaotzu died three times. Piccolo died three times. Krillin died three times. And then everybody on Earth died four times. So I guess everybody on Earth dying are two of the deaths for everyone else. Like, are, are would that not include Yamcha? That does include Yamcha as well. So then that's, that, would that, that give is Yamcha a third death? No, that's that is counting his second. So what you're saying is then Chi Chi died the most. Chi Chi only died once, and that was alongside everybody else. Oh, okay. But if the population of Earth, like where was she at the time that the population of Earth? Yeah, I was like, where was she at the time of the population of Earth? So that like she that? was like she was one of the last ones to catch it because she was on uh she was on the lookout. Mm, okay. I, okay. I get that. I get that. So Cause see, cause I'm still thinking like now, technically, Dr. if Green. Yamcha, like okay, the first time the entire population of Earth would have died, Yamcha would have already been dead from the Cyberman. Chaozu would have been dead from the Cyberman. Did Tien go out in that battle? I don't think Tien died in that no, battle. No, he didn't die. He was injured, but he didn't. He die. was injured. Yeah. So the only people we would have lost in that one would have been Yamcha and Chaozu. So that would have been one of their deaths. Yes. So as a result, if the entire population of Earth died after that, since they're already dead, the entire population's death doesn't count as one of their deaths. That's right. Correct. There it right. is. There it is. There it is. Okay. So I'm like, the funny, here's the funny thing about the, the, the population's death, because it's it's still kind of weird. So the first one was, of course, Kid Buu. Um, the second time was when Frieza blew up the earth in uh Re resurrection f and then you had to rewind and then yeah, yeah we said to rewind um the third time was which is it's kind of weird but this the third time is when uh future zeno 
kind of wiped it along with all of existence. But that was like that turned into its own timeline, and then it had to like go back into the past, and it, it, it's weird. It's weird. Okay. Um, and then the fourth time was uh, a side effect of the Black Star Dragon Balls, which was in GT. So it was in GT. Another it's up to you if you want to decide fight. if that's real or not. <laughs> it is real. Because it's real. It's I, I watched it, it counts. That's well, what I'm not even that. Isn't, it, isn't it considered canon now? No. No. Even with the little crossover thing they had? What no. Was it? Not uh, Hero? Not Hero. What was that thing they had? They had the little mini episodes on YouTube. Oh, uh, you're talking about uh, See, Super Dragon you know, Ball? Because they had the they no, because they, they had Evil Saiyan named Cumber, and it was a mysterious guy named X. He had a planet. He kidnapped Trunks to get all the Z fighters to that planet. No, th- oh, yeah, that's super not canon. You know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, that is hella not canon. You know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what What's you're talking about. That, sh- that shit, I don't know. Hold on, I'm going to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I think I struck a nerve again. No, no, I'm not. No, it's not. You're not uh, super Dragon Ball Heroes. Because that's what it's called. Heroes. Super Dragon Ball Heroes. Yeah, that shit is I, I just, super not canon. I just That's like one of those things where, like, if you have a video game and they just include all Goku's yeah, forms, like the, and they include Super Dragon Ball super Heroes, it's Super Smash Brothers of the Dragon Ball. <laughs> and so, like, like since just, you have that you're form everything that doesn't like, canonize throwing, it, that just acknowledges its existence. It, yeah. So you're just throwing everything in there. So you got, like, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, and then you got Goku and, and fucking uh, Tiencha and all that shit. Yeah, the, we just throwing everything in there, like uh, Ultra Master, uh, Ultra Instinct times three. That bitch, yeah, throw <laughs> in there too. <laughs> fuck it, fuck it. Whatever fuck we it. can create, yeah, we gonna it. put hey, it in there. Fuck it. Trunks got Super Saiyan God now. There, have it. Good. Yeah, like just whatever you can think of, it's in there. I mean, that's along the lines of any game where if it's. If it's achievable by one, anybody can have it. Yeah, pretty much. And that's kind of get high and just eat up everything in the kitchen. Yeah, that's just what happened. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just you know, what I'm saying it was a skin you were putting on, like, oh look, you've now unlocked this skin for that player, and right, like Tien has Super Saiyan capabilities. He ain't got no hair. How would you even he know if he was Super Saiyan? Super Saiyan stubble. You're <laughs> <laughs> gonna be running out there looking like a. Like you gotta fucking What's your boy go through <laughs> He's and just look the at fire. You gotta look at all the just characters and be like, yeah, that's 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 ooh, that's yeah, that thing. that's not real. That don't ooh. exist. Like that Zen- old fan, like that Goku? old fan art where Zeno had, Goku was like hold on, wait a minute. Eight when they had Goku in the big white hair <laughs> and that fan art they had. Oh, you yeah, know what? We so we may just have here. to do. We may just Zeno have to do a whole Goku. episode on Dragon Ball Z, just because there's between no, Dragon, Dragon Ball, Ball from Dragon Ball, Ball Z, to Dragon Ball Super, just Dragon Ball GT. Zeno Goku is an incarnation of Goku from a world separate to the main timeline. Who is a member of the Time Patrol? Hello, what is yep. this? Who's who's names is this? Soup. That was a hero. I'm telling you, it was ridiculous. oh my god! <laughs> it had they had the evil saying name Cumber, and if he hit you with his power. Like if he had like he glowed red. If he touched you, he took you over and made you evil. It was ridiculous. Oh, you don't want to talk about the shit that's happening in the goddamn <laughs> super manga. Holy shit! It's ridiculous. I mean, there, there's there's stuff out there, and people eat it up because people love Dragon Ball Z. And Sup- now I I will okay, say that see, they're thing. just making shit up now. Hold a super full power soup saying for limit broken. Nah, you're making shit up now. There's no way. <laughs> oh yeah, limit breaker. Oh yeah. Oh no! I mean, the whole oh, idea had, being that you know the man with no limits and da 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 da. And of course, breaking no, their limits. Had, they had Super Saiyan Four, Super Saiyan God Vegito. I mean, it was just like mm. ridiculous. Mur- both to that made my alternate timelines. Goku, <laughs> Super Saiyan Four, Goku and Vegeta merged. He had gigantic red hair, and he was like fighting everybody. It was ridiculous. Yeah, that made my stomach bubble. I mean, but it was inter- it was honestly conceptually I can't even say it wasn't entertaining. <laughs> Super yeah, Saiyan Four, Gogeta, or Vegito. 
Oh my goodness. Oh, we were serious. Like we were serious. <laughs> it's it's a thing. And and there's a difference, of course, you know, and it's like once you get into the difference in the fusion techniques, because you have the earrings and then you have you the have fusion the dance. Earrings, and the and dance, so it's like yeah. The two different fusion types make for different characters, and of course, they have to be at equal power levels when they do it. So, you know, Vegito versus Gogeta, you know, it's almost like I would be curious who would win in that fight. You know, that that would be an interesting. I feel like the power sets are somewhat different, and the attacks are different, but I think it would probably still result in a stalemate because it's going to be equal power. But I think the the capabilities of the characters at the time when they I, chose I to fuse shows that you have stronger characters fusing at this time versus weaker characters fusing I, at that time. I thought the Potara fusion was stronger than the dance. The fusion itself is stronger, but again, the point being the time at which they use that fusion versus where they were when they used the dance fusion. So the character itself, just because of the timeline, that's where the argument comes to say who would be stronger. Doesn't make up enough of the difference. But we are two min- two hours, 20 minutes in. <laughs> well, we got our next topic. We, uh, it seems that we have, we have our next whole, hour, at least. That's a whole show. That's, that, that's a whole show. That could right be there. a whole show. In fact, I may throw that out there, and I think we might get some good watches, some good views on that one. So we will have to come back and see about doing a whole Dragon Ball Z show. But oh, nonetheless, I, mean, I gotta watch GT I'll buckle soon. up. We'll hop on in like, there, watch some GT, like, get caught up, see what's what. Man. I'm gonna find out about oh, yeah. this Super Dragon Ball I'm Heroes ready. on well, YouTube. I hope, y'all, I hope y'all ready. I hope y'all doing y'all homework, because next time we talk, boy, I got some... Uh, I got, oh, I got, I got Majin Buu's M tattooed on the back of my neck. <laughs> oh, that's what's up. Go. That's what's up. Okay. So well. does that make you a Disney princess too? No, never mind. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can turn around real quick for that one. Hold on. <laughs> so, the floor. hey, I want to thank everybody who stayed around, everybody who's watched this. Um, if you're watching this, of course, you know you can find us on Facebook. Our group is Grown A Geeks. I'm Sam. This is David. This is Will. This is Tony. We appreciate all of you being here with us uh, for, for now and enjoy the conversation. Like I said, I was saying earlier. We, we thank you for tuning in, being a part of this discussion, giving us your feedback so that we have plenty to talk about. If there are other topics that you would like for us to pick up, please come in the group. Let us know. Uh, you can reply to it on the YouTube channel when we see it there. This will be posted later. And hey, we hope you have a good night. Peace. Later. So we gon' fade that bad boy. There we go. There we go. So we gon' get some music. There we go. Get some music. Oh, man. I kinda only wanna do this damn Dragon Ball talk anymore. Holy fuck. <laughs>